Hurricanes very tough, despite the fact they have yet to beat the Hurricanes. Today, keep an eye out for number 20 of the Pirates, Reggie McKinney against Cincinnati. In that 58-26 Pirate win, Reggie McKinney rushed for 212 yards. Defensively, East Carolina can play good football when the Pirates have their act together, and they are led by two fellas, number 19, Ellis Dillahunt, and this guy coming up right here, number 44, Vincent Smith, who was projected to be a high-round NFL draft choice this year. Vincent Smith, number 44, one of those good old-fashioned hard-nosed linebackers. When he hits you, you know you've been stung. This is what the Hurricanes offense will be running into today. Of course, the Hurricanes ranked third in the country. They've won 26 regular season games in a row, 19 consecutive games on the road, or at least they're going for 19 today. And when you talk about the Hurricanes offensively, you talk about a very diversified attack. But today, look for some good ground action from number five, Melvin Bratton, and the freshman, the exciting freshman, number 28, Leonard Conley. Raycom Sports presents College Football Action. Today, live from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, it's the Miami Hurricanes versus the East Carolina University Pirates. Today's game is brought to you by Budweiser. Beach wood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. And by Eckerd Photo Finishing, nothing looks better. <laughs> To say the least, it is a beautiful Indian summer afternoon here in Greenville, North Carolina. I'm Rich Brenner along with Bob Kuchenberg and Cambrell Marshall. We'll be bringing you today's exciting action between the Miami Hurricanes and the East Carolina Pirates. And Cooch, uh, you look at this game and I think there's a tendency to look past East Carolina and to say Miami should win this game in a runaway if you look by what Miami has done this year and what East Carolina has done. Jimmy Johnson back at the hotel this morning is a genuinely worried man. You bet, Rich, and I think if there's a tendency to, to look past the East Carolina team, it's only by the fans here in East Carolina. The Hurricanes are not looking past the Pirates. Number one, the Pirates have played them tough the last several years here. It's never been an easy victory for the Hurricanes here. Secondly, this is a strange East Carolina team. They played poorly last week at, at South Carolina, but up until last week, they had been playing very well as of late, winning three out of four of their last ball games. In a word, speed, and when you have that element, a lot of bad things can happen if you're playing against them. Well, that's the interesting analogy that Jimmy Johnson had. He said that, well, last week against Cincinnati, we knew we were going to win that game. Even if Cincinnati played the very best they could, we had the better football team. East Carolina, if East Carolina plays the game that they are capable of playing, could give Miami a lot of trouble if Miami is not ready and Miami could lose the game. That's exactly what he said. If East Carolina plays well today and if the Hurricanes don't, East Carolina can come out of here victorious. Not the case last week. A very fast, explosive team here. They're going to try to run the ball. That's what they do well. It's going to be a very challenging game for the Hurricanes. Well, you know, you look at Miami, though, and you look at this offense, and, I mean, they hit you every which way. Uh, it, it's uh, unbelievable. 404 yards total offense, 40 points a game. They get you passing. They get you running, and they're healthy, and they've got a new dimension this week, too. They sure do. They, they move the ball around. There's not going to be a Chuck Foreman or an Otis Anderson in their offense. They, they've got three great ball carriers, and those ball carriers can also catch the ball out of the backfield equally well. So it's diversified is the name for their offense, and uh, that's a, a real tribute to the coaching staff. Well, let's talk about the running backs. Uh, Melvin Bratt, number five, very impressive. Warren Williams, maybe people tend to overlook him, but he had over 100 yards last week. And then this freshman, Leonard Conley, 170 pounds. Somebody better tell him that he doesn't weigh, a, weigh 215 because that's the type of runner he is. He likes to run inside. Superfly, that's right. In the state of Florida, everybody's talking about uh, Emmett Smith from the uh, University of Florida. Of course, he's the first. He's gained 1,000 yards faster than anybody in NCAA history. But let's not forget about Leonard Conley. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about this young man in the next uh, two or three years. Well, let's talk a little bit about the Miami defense, too. They're coming up against an interesting offense today because we don't know exactly what we're going to see. We may see an eye formation. Then we may see that single setback, the old double wing tee, they now call it the run and shoot. Uh, 
uh, it could present some problems if if East Carolina has its act together. It'll be exciting because they don't have a tight end. This this run and shoot offense has three wide receivers, and I'm not quite sure how they run the ball so effectively without having a, a fifth big strong blocker up front. But it's a wide open type of offense, and they're capable of putting on uh, points. They've got a lot of yardage this year, but they've been shooting themselves in the foot. They've had a lot of penalties, averaging over eight penalties a game, and a lot of uh, turnovers. Uh, no sustained drives. They they do sustain the drive, but they don't get the ball in the end zone. If they don't, if they're not their own worst enemy today, this could be a, an exciting ball game. Well, the the thing about East Carolina is they have had those problems controlling the football. So let's go down now to the field where the football game is going to be played, and Cambrell Marshall. Cambrell? Richie, one of the things also that you might watch out for in terms of the Pirate offensive attack and how well the Canes can defense it is that George Myra is not going to be starting today. It's Bernard Clark, and I know a lot of times in this kind of alpha, offense that the Pirates will be using, the linebackers play a key role in trying to shut off the running game or whether they go out with the pass. And on that kind of option, George Myra has had an awful lot of experience. It should be noted that in the past, Jimmy Johnson coached teams have done very well against the option kind of uh, offense, such as Oklahoma, for example. They've done very well against Oklahoma, and uh, you know that they're ranked number one in the country, so if the Canes can contain that, they can do very well. They just have to do what they know they can do against the Pirates offense and look at the Pirates as a team that can beat them with that quick speed that you talked about that Jimmy Johnson is, of course, worried about. Last week, they had some problems. Coach Johnson during the week has said that he expects just getting back into the routine of playing football games will be able to solve some of that. The pass is being thrown high. The defensive secondary being able to allow the, the receivers to be able to get close to where they can catch the pass. That was a problem last week against Cincinnati, if Danny McCoy's receivers had been able to catch some of the passes, it may, might have been a much different football game. We expect this team not to throw as much, to take advantage of the running back, who kind of reminds me of uh, Craig Ironhead Haywood in Pittsburgh, and he also ran for over 200 yards, so they're going to have to watch over that, and having Bernard Clark in at starter, that may pose some problems. You expect to see the Pirates run right up the gut toward the middle if they can, and, and try to exploit the fact that George Meyer is not starting. We'll be keeping tabs, of course, and watch that throughout the game. Rich, back to you. Okay, Cambrell, we're back up top here, and we're just moments away from the kickoff of today's game between the Miami Hurricanes and the Pirates of East Carolina. We'll be right back with the start of today's game after this brief timeout. here at Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. It's the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Pirates of East Carolina University. Miami holds a 5-0 edge in this series, but as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, each game has been a hotly contested game, even though last year the score was 36-10. Cooch, it was still a tough football game. No such thing as an easy win, if history is any indication here for Jimmy Johnson and his staff, Rich. Uh, they are going to be in for a ball game today, and, and they're aware of it. I expect to see the Hurricanes play well this week. Uh, first half of the year is eight. Uh, the season's eight weeks old, I should say. Now the Hurricanes have only played five games. That's tough to develop a consistency when you're playing one week and having two weeks off. So the Hurricanes are looking forward to playing each and every week from here until the uh, end of the season. Well, the Hurricanes have won the coin toss. They have elected to receive. So we're going to see right away what this offense can do against the defense of the East Carolina Pirates. Jimmy Johnson on the sidelines. A 34-8 record at the University of Miami. Hurricanes going for their 19th consecutive road win today and their 27th consecutive regular season win. Jimmy is hoping that uh, today's ballgame is not like his uh, evening last night. He had kind of a rough night. <laughs> there are some uh, uh, trick-or-treaters from East Carolina. <laughs> yeah, we will get into that, too, a little bit later. Alex Johnson and Randall Hill back deep. It is going to come over to Johnson. He takes it at the 10 to the 15 to the 20. He's out and just about to the 25-yard line where he is just drilled out of bounds. Good hard tackle right there by number 17 of the East Carolina Pirates. Tyson making the stop for the Pirates. Singletary getting credit for that tackle for the East Carolina Pirates. So here come the Miami Hurricanes. 
Steve Walsh is your quarterback. Split backfield. Mel Bratton, number five, number 24, Warren Williams will go to Bratton. Left side, cutting back across the right, across the 30, up to about the 33-yard line. We'll set up the Miami offense for you here. Steve Walsh is your quarterback. Warren Williams, Mel Bratton, the running backs. Michael Irvin, a wide receiver, along with Brian Blades. The tight end will be Charles Henry, number 82, one of your co-captains today. And on the line, it'll be Matt Patchman, Mike Sullivan, Rod Holder, Scott Proven, and John O'Neill. Second down, make it about two for the Hurricanes. Going into the I formation this time. Tailback is Williams. Blocking back, Mel Bratton will go to Bratton. And he is hit in the backfield, and he's going to lose about a yard, I'd say there, Cooch. Yeah, it was a fine play that time by the line by the defensive end, Walter Bryant. He got rid of his blocker and, and met the ball carry on the offensive side of the field. Setting up the Pirates defense, Ron Gilliard, Meldrick Rainbow, Walter Bryant, Bubba Waters, Vincent Smith, we talked about him, number 44. Keep an eye on him. John Williamson and Willie Powell, number 84, your outside linebacker. Make it third and three for the Miami Hurricanes. Ball just shy of the 33-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Walsh dropping back the pass. Puts the ball in the air, and he's got Bratton out of the backfield, and he's got the first down up to about the 38-yard line. One thing that Miami does very well, Bob, is the fact that they can find the backs out of the backfield, something you've got to do if you're going to run the pro-style offense. No question about that. Steve Walsh doesn't have the country's strongest arm, but he's a very intelligent young man. He knows how to read defenses and where to put the ball. He moves the ball around to both wide receivers, a tight end, and both ball carriers. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. Ball just past their own 37-yard line. I formation. Tailback is Williams. Sidelines to the right, open field to the left. And off goes to Williams across the 40, and he just works his way hard up to the 44-yard line. Pickup of about seven. Just underway here from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. No score. 13 minutes remaining to be played in the first quarter. Fine block that time, Rich, by the left tackle, number 71, Matt Patchen, uh, who is the strongest hurricane currently since Dan Celio's ineligibility. A bench pressing over 500 pounds. That time he took uh, Walter Bryant right out of the play. Make it second down and a long three. Dual backs this time. The fake. Now the throw over to Michael Irvin. He's got a little bit of running room. He's trying to find a first down, and he hesitated, and he's not going to make it to the first down marker, Bob. I think maybe if he'd have just put his head down that time, he might have gotten it. That's true. I think that he probably lost uh, sight of where the sticks were that time. You won't see that very often from Michael Irvin. His nickname, Rich, is the playmaker. He can make things happen in a hurry. Uh, that time, probably poor judgment, uh, turning up a yard or so short of the first down. However, that was only second down, not third down. So they have, at this point, they've got about a good yard to go. Third and just about a yard. Ball resting just shy of the 47-yard line of the Hurricanes. Sidelines to the left, open field to the right, the I formation, hand off to Williams, and he has got the first down as he gets almost up to midfield. He won't make it to midfield, but it will be enough for the Hurricanes' second first down in this drive. Beautiful Saturday afternoon for football in Greenville, North Carolina. Temperature just about in the low 70s. Wonderful football weather. Split backfield this time for the Hurricanes. Michael Irvin flanked out on your right. Walsh back to pass. He has got the time, putting it up, and it's off the hands of Mel Bratton at the 45-yard line of East Carolina. Incomplete. Television viewers saw... Steve Walsh getting knocked down after he threw the ball that time. The pressure being applied by Ron Gilliard. Uh, he had time to throw. It's just kind of extremely well thrown ball, Rich. Uh, over the uh, season so far, it appears as if Steve Walsh is kind of a slow starter. He uh, kind of reaches his peak not until the fourth or fifth inning, if you know what it's been lately. And last week was no exception. He had a kind of a poor first half. Well, you always want him to close strong, though, don't you? It'll be second and ten. Bratton alone set back. Walsh back to pass. Puts the ball up in the air for Henry, and he's got it at the 26. He crosses the 25, and he's down to the 22-yard line of East Carolina. Nothing wrong with that ball. 
No, no sooner said than uh, Steve throws a perfect pass. He put a little air under that one, lofted it just nicely, and the tight end, number 82, caught it in full stride. Here you're seeing a, a linebacker having to cover a tight end. This is difficult for a strong side linebacker to run stride for stride with a tight end that vertically, that 30 yards downfield. Asking a lot of a linebacker to have him cover that deep. It's first and ten for the Hurricanes. Their third first down in this drive. Ball at the 22-yard line of East Carolina. I formation. Walsh back to pass again. The out pattern gets it over there to Brian Blades, and it's complete. Blades out of bounds at about the 14-yard line. Oh, that's about a pickup of eight. Ten minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. No score. A little isolation here on Brian Blades, a little out pad in here. As an offensive lineman, you love this on first down. It's, it's great. It's very easy to pass back. Brian Blades, of course, the brother of Benny Blades, and uh, talk about speed in that family, huh? They are quick, and they are good. Second down, long two. And off this time, going to Brian, trying to sweep right. He's going to lose about six yards, and a beautiful tackle. We talked about him, Cooch. Number 44, Vincent Smith. Big, big top pro prospect, Vincent Smith, uh, six feet four, 223 pounds, very fast, agile, hostile, mobile, he's got it all, and he's the, uh, he along with Ellis uh, Dillahunt are the, uh, the leaders of this, of this uh, defense here. You're going to see good penetration, number 44 making the tackle. Boy, great initial contact, too, because Bratton goes about 225 pounds. Strong yeah, he's not a, not a little boy. Well, now we have a good third down right here. Third and eight, ball at the 20-yard line of East Carolina. Walsh, definite passing situation. He's back to throw under a little pressure, flushed out of the pocket, gets it to Bratton. Bratton at this six, five. He's going to try to dive in the loose football. And who's got it? I think Miami has recovered the football. It will be Miami. It will be a first down. Melvin Bratton trying to dive in now. Apparently, one official pooch is right down there at about the half-yard line. He may rule that very possibly Bratton was down at that point. No, he should not, Rich. He definitely clearly was not down. That ball came out in midair, uh, nor had he crossed the plane of the end zone. He was within about a half a yard of the end zone. But uh, it was a fumble, clearly, and it was recovered by Mike Sullivan, fortunate for the Hurricanes. You're going to see a look at it here. Well, they conferred and moved it back just past the five-yard line. Ball just shy of the five. But it will be a first down for the Hurricanes. Fourth first Ball's down out. in the drive. Split backfield. Williams and Bratton. Walsh, your quarterback. Blades out to the right. There's the pass to Blades in the end zone. Touchdown. Miami striking very quickly right here. Nine minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. And Miami goes on top by a 6-0 score on a five-yard touchdown pass from Steve Walsh to Brian Blades. Here you're going to take a look at it. The Hurricanes make it look easy. A little in pattern by Brian Blades. Ball is right on the money. And uh, when the timing is that good, there's not much a score defensive halfback can do about it. Isolated one-on-one -on -one with a receiver of the caliber of Brian Blades. Nice drive by the Hurricanes here in the opening moments. Ray Cox with the extra point. It is up and it is good. He's 21 for 21 on the air. So we have a timeout on the field with a score. Miami 7, East Carolina nothing. We'll be back right after this. Great. Seven to nothing on a six-yard touchdown pass from Steve Walsh to Brian Blades for Blades, his 13th career touchdown pass at the University of Miami. Edgar Bennis will be doing the kickoff for the Miami Hurricanes. Nine minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Back deep for East Carolina. Number 21, Chuck Burleff. And number 32, Tim James. Here's the kickoff, and it's going to be taken by James at about the 13-yard line, across the 20, 25, and gets just across the 25, maybe to the 26-yard line. And that's where the Pirates will be putting it in play for their first offensive possession of this Saturday afternoon. Well, I'm sure Jimmy Johnson and his staff are relieved to see that kind of kickoff coverage holding the, uh, the opponents to inside the 30-yard line. That was a big downfall last week. Uh, the Bearcats of Cincinnati started their opening four possessions uh, at or near midfield. Travis Hunter, the quarterback for the East Carolina Pirates, and they will line up this time in the I formation. Anthony Simpson, the fullback, number 31, and he is a plowing runner, and there is Reggie Branch right there. 
and he has stacked up probably a yard deep in the backfield. He may have lost a yard on that, Coach. Fine play by number 96, Daniel Stubbs, the Lombardi Award candidate. Uh, he's a finalist, incidentally. Rich uh, just announced this week that Daniel, Daniel Stubbs is one of the finalists in the Lombardi Award, uh, Lombardi Trophy running. Fine play that time, stuffing up the blocker and the ball here at the line of scrimmage. No argument on Daniel Stubbs. It was a loss of one. Make it second and 11 for the Pirates from their own 25-yard line. High formation, sidelines to the right, open field to the left. Hunter faking the handoff, and he rolls out to the left, puts the ball in the air, and it is complete to his fullback, Anthony Simpson, up at the 28-yard line. Let's set up the Pirate offense for you right now. Anthony Simpson, of course, will be probably a draft choice because he's big and strong. Travis Hunter, your quarterback, the backfield, Reggie McKinney and Anthony Simpson, and Gerard Moody. Ron Jones, one of your wide receivers. He's a former quarterback. And number 80, Walter Williams. Okay, number 52, Grant Lowe, Wade Perry, Kyle Condry, Stuart Southall, and Todd Druak are your interior linemen. Third down and seven for the Pirates. Ball at the 27. Just past the 27. Hunter back to pass, comes out of the pocket and goes straight forward to the 35, up to about the 38-yard line. And he's got the first down for East Carolina. That's what he does best. Uh, a Jameel Holloway type of quarterback. He can throw the ball fine, but he's also a, a very dangerous scrambler. Has rushed for more than 300 yards this season. And when a quarterback can scramble and pick up a key first down like that and get your offense out of the hole, that's a very important weapon. First down for the East Carolina Pirates. Ball at their own 39-yard line. Sidelines to the left, open field to the right. It's the I formation again. Into the backfield this time to McKinney. And McKinney across the 43, up to about the 44-yard line. That's at the Miami defense right now. Daniel Stubbs, Jimmy Jones, Greg Mott, Bill Hawkins, Randy Shannon, George Myra Jr., and Rod Carter. That's your front. Although we did mention the name George Myra Jr., there's the backfield right there. Bubba McDowell, Selwyn Brown, Benny Blades, and Tolbert Bain. George Myra Jr. will not be playing unless he is absolutely needed today. But he is a name that you cannot forget when you talk about Miami defense. Seven minutes, 32 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Miami on top of East Carolina, seven to nothing. Well, Rich, it's a shame George Myra Jr. cannot be in there today. As you said, he will play only if needed. Uh, he's about 46 tackles shy of the all-time, 49 tackles shy of the all-time career tackle mark at University of Miami. And he's been nominated for the Butkus Award. Named after Dick Butkus, which goes to the country's top linebacker. There's a handoff to Simpson on the delay across the 45. Gets to about the 47-yard line. Fine play that time by defensive end number 54, Bill Hawkins, a very cerebral type ball player. That was a little delayed draw play designed to look like a pass, and uh, Bill Hawkins was all over it. He played off his man, kept his uh, concentration on the ball, and was not fooled at all. So for East Carolina facing a third and three situation. Ball just shy of their 47-yard line, and whoops! Jimmy Jones, a little bit too eager that time, Cooch. Jumped the gun. <laughs> you can't blame him. And that's going to give East Carolina their second first down of this offensive possession. There's Jimmy Jones. Right now, Jimmy Jones, I'm sure, is trying to crawl right under that pirate emblem in the center of the field there. But that's a crucial first down. Third down and less than five to go for a first down. And uh, all of a sudden, it's first and ten. And it puts the ball into hurricane territory. Ball at the 48-yard line. Art Baker, the head coach of the East Carolina Pirates. They hand off to the big, bruising Anthony Simpson across the 45. And he's down to the 43. Big and bruising is right. Rich, this man is 245 pounds on 5 feet 10 inches. Talk about the bowling ball. I thought I played with the bowling ball. Don Nottingham at 5'10", 245. That man is as wide as he is tall. He's tough. He had a touchdown, too, uh, in the, the, the first time that, um, well, two years ago when East Carolina and Miami played right here at Ficklin Stadium. He's a tough one. There it is, a handoff to Simpson as a flag goes down. Simpson does not make it to the 40-yard line, but there's a flag on the play. And it will be against East Carolina. It's 
what you were talking about at the top of the show, Cooch. They get something going. East Carolina gets something going, and bingo, along comes a penalty. That's right. They've self-destructed all year long. They've got a lot of offensive yards, but not enough points to correlate with those yardage. They'll, they'll have a sustained drive and then get inside the 20-yard line and not score. But I'll tell you what, it's an impressive drive, uh, a responding drive this time by the Pirates because there's no quicker way to take a, a hostile crowd out of a ball game than to do what the Hurricanes just did and methodically march down and get on the board. But the Pirates, in turn, coming back and responding. Five-yard penalty, illegal motion. will make it second and about 11. Ball just inside Miami territory. Hunter going to run the option. He's going to keep it for 45, and he gets down to about the 41-yard line. Good tackle there made by Bernard Clark of the Hurricanes. Miami Bernard, on front, 7-0. Bernard Clark, number 57, is a sophomore, 6 feet 2, 238 pounds, and he's playing uh, for the injured George Myra Jr. The Hurricanes are not going to miss a lot with Myra being out there. The uh, Bernard Clark is a very capable replacement and is going to be a, a force for a, a long time, being just a sophomore. Third down, about three for the Pirates. Ball just across the 41-yard line of the Hurricanes. Travis Hunter spinning, reverse pivot. There's the pitch right there, and it is fumbled out of bounds. That was a pitch intended. Try to pick up who that is, Lewis. This is interesting. Interesting, Rich, because you see Coach Johnson trying to argue vehemently with the referee on the, on the mark there. You're going to see the ball. Should not have been pitched here. Once it's held, it should have been held. They're very fortunate that the ball went out of bounds here. But the question is now, the ball was last touched at the 41-yard at the line, but the ball was fumbled forward across the 40-yard line down to about the 38-yard line, which makes it very close to the first down. And the rule, of course, is wherever the ball goes out of bounds, and that's why the Pirates got a, a very good break there, and Coach Johnson was not at all happy about it. Well, Jimmy lost that argument right there. Let's see what happens with the first down measurement. Looks like it's going to be just a tad short. No! It will be a first down. A first down for the East Carolina Pirates, and that's their third first down in this drive. And the crowd like that one. Yeah, that'll get the crowd back into it. I have to say I'm a little disappointed that this uh, Ficklin Stadium is not sold out here today, although people are still coming in. When you bring a team in the caliber of Miami, you would think that the building would be packed. First and 10 for the East Carolina Pirates. Ball at the 38-yard line of Miami. Sidelines to the left, open field to the right. The lone setback is Anthony Simpson, and he gets it up the middle. And boy, I tell you, bringing him down is uh, like trying to bring down a runaway rhinoceros at times. <laughs> Made it to the 36. It was a hard-earned two yards, let's put it that way. Yeah, he took on a lot of hurricanes to gain two yards. The lead hit that was by number 22, Selwyn Brown, an outstanding strong safety. Uh, and he kind of slowed him down a little bit and was just holding on for, for dear life until some of his teammates uh, arrived to help. Pirates lining up in the I formation. Willie Lewis, the tailback. Anthony Simpson, the fullback, will have the illegal movement. Legal procedure. Looked like the left tackle there, Cooch of East Carolina, jumped the gun just a bit. This is exactly what they've done all season long, Rich. They, again, they've had a lot of, a lot of speed in the team, a lot of uh, fine plays, and they go down. They're, they're very effective between the 20-yard lines, and then they, for one reason or another, get a penalty or a fumble. And watch on the right-hand side of your screen here, the left guard. Oh, my gosh, the left guard, number 67. So the Pirates lose five yards on that. It'll make it second down and about 13. Simpson, your lone setback. Run and shoot formation this time. Travis Hunter back to pass under pressure, but he's scrambling around, puts the ball up, and it is complete there for Gerard Moody. Gerard Moody taking in that pass at the 25-yard line. Gerard Moody. And it'll be a first down for the Pirates. Now, this has been impressive, Bob. The fact that the Pirates now ground out four first downs, and they've done it even committing penalties. A fine individual effort by Travis Hunt here. You're going to see him evade Daniel Stubbs right there. Could have been a sack, number one. And secondly, having the uh, uh, the alertness to, to uh, not try to run for it and, and hit the open man. High formation. Open field is to the left. Gerard Moody in the flanker position to the strong side left. There's the handoff that time. 
to Reggie Branch. No, yeah, Reggie McKinney, we mean. Reggie McKinney. And it's, uh, it's going to be a flag on the play, too, Coach. Might be a late hit or a face mask. Personal foul. Late hit on Miami. And that came at a very inopportune time for the Hurricanes. It sure did, deep in their own territory. And just as I said, there's no better way to take a crowd out of a ball game than to have the visiting team march down the field on the opening march. This is about the best way to get the home team back into the ball game and come right back with a very impressive drive all the way down to the 10-yard line now. Reggie McKinney was your ball carrier. And with that penalty, it is first and 10 for the Pirates. And it'll be interesting to see if they have to go all the way for the first down or whether that nose of that football is just shy of the 10-yard line. Looks like it's first and goal. Hand off to Simpson. He gets to the six. This is very, very impressive opening drive for the Pirates here. That was just a simple... Uh, fullback power buck play up the middle, and it's going to be you're going to be hard pressed to stop 245-pound uh, Anthony Simpson uh, for less than a couple yards. In that case, he got four yards. And you know Simpson didn't do it all by himself either. That means that the East Carolina offensive front is doing some work today too. Second down, six yards to go for the touchdown. I formation. Hand off to Simpson again. And he gets to about the four-yard line. Two minutes, 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Miami 7, East Carolina nothing. Yardage is getting real tough down there. When you get inside the five-yard line, you pay dearly for every uh, fraction of a foot. And at that time, it was, uh, again, a power play with Anthony Simpson carrying the ball behind the left guard, number 67, uh, Wade Perry. And uh, we have, what, a third and four. Third and three. Third and goal from the three-yard line. High formation for the Pirates. Travis Hunter wanted to... Oh, well, the question is, did his knee hit? But it apparently did. He tripped coming out on the reverse pivot, and his knee went down at about the seven-yard line. Actually, that worked in East Carolina's favor because uh, the pitch man was going to be lost right there. Would have lost about four or five more yards. Here it is. I don't think we can see it from this angle. I think he tripped over the fullback when he was faking the handoff over center, caught his ankle, and uh, forced the, uh, the loss. So the Pirates will go for the field goal. A little mix-up right there, and the kick is blocked. The kick is blocked, and it looked like the man getting in on the block, Bubba McDowell, who specially is blocking. Now, let's see, they're going to call it off sides. Oh, that's confusing. Let's take a look at it here. Chuck Burles field goal attempt. If, here's Bubba McDowell coming in, and he has the block. And they're going to say somebody, probably Bubba McDowell, was off sides on that. McDowell especially is kick blocking. Jimmy Johnson trying to get a clarification there. I believe they lined up offside. I didn't really see any movement there, so that must have been the case. It's still fourth down, and East Carolina will get another crack at it. Chuck Burlett will be doing the kicking. He's a left footer. Be a 20-yard attempt. The kick is up, and the kick is good. So, with one minute and 18 seconds remaining in the first quarter play from Thicklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, it's Miami 7, East Carolina 3. Craig Lucido will be kicking off for the East Carolina Pirates. They just scored on the field goal, 7-3, to three, Miami on top. Here's the kickoff. Kickoff taken by number 21, Alex Johnson. Johnson getting up across the 25 to about the 28-yard line. We'll be back right after this. We're not going to take that commercial break right now. 
There's the East Carolina scoring drive, and it's impressive, Coach. 16 plays, 71 yards, grinding out eight minutes and 12 seconds. Coming away with a 20-yard Chuck Burleth field goal to give us our 7-3 score. A sustained drive and a very impressive drive by the Pirates, Rich, but it's also important that they ended up with some points on the board. They did their darndest to, to, to try to follow it up there, but uh, fortunately the Hurricanes gave it back to them by being offside on that muffed field goal. Ball at the 27-yard line of the Hurricanes. Walsh, your quarterback, handing off to Williams. Williams trying to come around the right side. Gets to cross the 30 and finally driven out of bounds right there at the 32-yard line. Good individual effort that time by Warren Williams. That that four-yard gain uh, should have been a, a zero or one-yard gain. It was all individual effort. Uh, first of all, he had the speed. You're going to watch number 24, Warren Williams here. No place to go inside. Now the option is to the outside. Showing some fine speed there, but lowering the shoulder, not going out of bounds, fighting for the extra yardage there, and that's the difference between a, a negative play and a four-yard, four- to five-yard gain. So he gets five yards for his efforts right there, second and five. Ball at the 32-yard line of the Hurricanes, and some extracurricular activity on the line of scrimmage as the flags fly. And it's going to go against the Hurricanes, so that hard-earned five yards that Warren Williams got is going to go right back. Yeah, Matt Patch in number 71 uh, anticipated the count a little bit there and uh, was obviously a little quick, and right now he's feeling a little bit foolish. Which prior to that field goal, the Hurricanes had only given up 11 first-quarter points in their five games this season. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball at the 27-yard line of the Hurricanes. Eye formation, Mel Bratton. The up back, tail back, Warren Williams. Walsh back to pass. Looking for Charles Henry, the tight end, and the ball's incomplete at the 48-yard line. We'll bring up a third and 10 situation. Let's go down to the field now to Cambrell Marshall. Rich, one of the things uh, Butch Davis wanted to emphasize to the defensive guys in there who just uh, were on the field for a long time is that they had a lot of chances to get at that uh, pirate offense. They, they should not get down on themselves. They had to gave up a couple of uh, first downs by a penalty. They had a couple of chances at a sack. They got to keep their confidence up and know that they can beat this pirate offense. They're going to go back in with a new, renewed confidence. Third and ten for the Hurricanes. Lone setback, Melvin Bratton. Back to pass is Walsh. Got the time to throw, putting it upfield, and he's got his receiver, and it is number 33, Brett Perriman. Brett Perriman playing his first game, and some good action right there. It's good to see Brett Perriman back in uniform. This is the fastest man in the Hurricane squad in the 40-yard dash, consistently timed the fourth, about 4.3 range, and Perriman's been injured, and... Uh, Frankly, Richie, he had quite a decision to make here with regard to eligibility. He's, uh, he's an outstanding talent, uh, but was decide, trying to decide whether or not to come back this year or, or wait till next year. And uh, his competitive juices are flowing, and he's made the option to, to compete this season. And that was his first catch of the year, a little mix-up in the backfield. Williams tripped, got back up, and even picked up some yards there. Good second effort by Warren Williams as he gets down to about the 42-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. This Hurricane squad is so so deep in talent. Uh, the wide receiver position, for instance, on one side you've got Michael Irvin, and on the other side Brian Blades, and now Brett Perriman, and Dale Dawkins. The coaching staff is very high on him for the future. Uh, a lot of talent. And we still haven't seen Leonard Conley yet today. <laughs> Second down, about seven. Walsh back to pass. Across the middle, there's Michael Irvin right there, and he works his way maybe across the 35-yard line. And he's probably going to be a shy of the first down, and that should do it for the first quarter of play here from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. The score, Miami 7, East Carolina 3. With Eckert System 2 photo processing, you always get two sets of great looking. Hey Roy. We are uh, we got we are back to Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, where Miami leads East Carolina 7-3. The Hurricanes driving again. Ball just across the 35-yard line. Third down and a yard. Miami going for its sixth first down of this football game. Walsh with a long count. Hand 
off to Melvin Bratton going to the outside, and he's got the first down. I don't know that he has it. It's going to be close. It's going to be close. Yeah, I, I was a little quick right there in, in saying that. If he would have just dipped in there and dipped the shoulder, he could have had the first down for sure, but he decided to go to the outside. I don't know. It's uh, no, in fact, he, he didn't uh, get it. He lost a little bit of yardage there. Uh, Mel couldn't turn it up inside because there was penetration on the inside there by the Pirate defensive lineman. Uh, chalk up a victory that time to the defensive line of the Pirates over the offensive line of the Hurricanes. Mel was forced to get outside and didn't quite have enough, enough speed that time to get there. And uh, that's just good defense. There's a timeout on the field called by Miami. We'll be back after this brief timeout. North Carolina, it's Miami 7, East Carolina 3. Travel arranged through Eastern Airlines, now serving Miami with convenient nonstop flights to Lima and Caracas. Eastern, we've got your ticket to explore the splendor of South America. It's fourth and less than a yard for the Miami Hurricanes ball just across the 35-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Steve Walsh, the quarterback for the Hurricanes, barking out another long count. Handoff goes to Mel Bratton, and he's got it that time, Cooch. I can say that with certainty. <laughs> You're very observant. Fine charge by the left side of the offensive line that time of the Hurricanes. They just removed the resistance, and uh, including big number 44, the linebacker, Vincent Smith, was nowhere to be found that time. And... Uh, a big play there because that uh, enables the Hurricanes, of course, to drive deep into pirate territory. Ball at the 33-yard line of East Carolina. I formation, Bratton and Williams, the setbacks. Michael Irvin in the slot along with Brian Blades. There's the pass to Irvin at the 25, 20, 15. Puts his head down and maybe gets across the 15-yard line. That'll be another first down for Miami. They have seven so far in this football game. And for Steve Walsh, Bob, he's nine for 11 passing with a touchdown. Very impressive beginning for a man that has not started well uh, so far this season. I like that call, Rich, because on first down, if you might be expecting them to run the ball, of course. And uh, when they're expecting you to run, there's no better time to throw than on first down like that. You saw the result. Michael Irvin wide open. And I might tell you, from an offensive lineman's standpoint, that's the easiest time in the world to, block, to pass block is on first down. Split backfield this time. Walsh back to pass again. He's got the time looking in the end zone. And the ball is intercepted and dropped. And the man intercepting and dropping it was Vincent Smith. The ball should not have been thrown had not Vincent Smith been there. Uh, Ellis Dillahunt hat was there. Uh, the receiver was well covered and should not have been thrown. Steve Walsh here has all day to throw the ball. Excellent protection. Number 76 there. Good protection. Could have uh, taken a drink of a Coca-Cola here. Ball underthrown, but even if it had been thrown well, should not have been thrown into that coverage. Excellent coverage and uh, bad decision to put that one up. Second and 10 for Miami at the 15-yard line of East Carolina. Hand off to Mel Bratton, and he is stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. John Williamson, number 86, making the initial contact. 13 minutes and 9 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Miami 7, East Carolina 3. Third and 10 for the Hurricanes. Ball remains at the 15-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. So far, Rich, the Pirates are being extremely competitive as uh, the legacy of this series has been. They're giving the Hurricanes all they want right now. Split backfield, Mel Bratton, Warren Williams, the running backs. Walsh back to pass. Flag on the play in the end zone for Michael Irvin. Touchdown. I believe that'll be his 24th career touchdown. It is his 24th career touchdown, but it may be coming back because there is a flag on the play. Now, that is one shy of the record here at Miami, but it's going to come back. Michael Irvin's touchdown will not count. These are the ones you're glad that you're not a pro when they call out the number. <laughs> That's right. We got no, no number call that time. You can bet Jimmy Johnson's going to know who, though. Yeah, he'll know. Hear about it, whoever it is, huh? 
Jim Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, not happy at all right now. Legal procedure, five yards will make it third and 15 now, and negating that touchdown from Michael Irvin. Split back there. Walsh definitely back to pass. Moving around, there's his little flip to Michael Irvin. It's intercepted this time by Vincent Smith at the 10, 15, 20, and Mel Bratton drills him out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. So a Miami drive, Cooch, is stalled right there. Vincent Smith dropped his first interception, made sure he didn't do it the second time. I'm telling you, this Vincent Smith is all over the field. He's uh, made two tackles for losses so far. Uh, could have had two interceptions. This man, no one of the uh, pro scouts are raving about his ability here. You're going to see Vincent Smith get a good drop. Once again, all day long, the pass for Steve Walsh. Starts to scramble, puts the ball up. Didn't even see Vincent Smith coming from the right side of your screen there. And uh, this is a top athlete. Well, while we're, while we're looking at this, uh, again, from another angle, we should point out there's a penalty flag on the field, and they're discussing the situation, and we may be running this play over. Rich. The score is Miami 7, East Carolina 3. There's a penalty on the play, but there's also a, a timeout in the game. We'll be back after this. Snake River one. Bob Kuchenberg. That interception will stand. The penalty after the interception. Blocking below the knees. East Carolina has the football. First and ten at the ten. And wow, there we go. The Pirates just pumped up right here. Timmy James, the ball carrier, gain a 15 or just shy of 15. We'll give him 14 yards on that carry up to the 24-yard line. So Vincent Smith with the interception. And now East Carolina coming right back. This series has always been a tough one. Look at the stats on the rushing yardage. 57 yards for East Carolina, only 23 for Miami. Travis Hunter, the pitch, the back right there. Could it be the Willie James? Willie Lewis, Willie Lewis, the ball carrier. Once again, a gain of five yards, so that's a big victory for the uh, Pirates on first down. If you can pound out four, five, six yards on first down, uh, most of the day, you're going you're to come out ahead. And uh, these Pirates are, are here to play. Uh, it's been kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team this year, and unfortunately for the Hurricanes right now, it's, it's Dr. Jekyll. Pick up a five. That makes it second and five. Hand off to Tim James, and he finds the going a little bit congested right there. Gets maybe a yard for his effort. Well, there was a mix-up in the backfield again. You saw that earlier, Travis Hunter. Once again, they got his legs tangled up with one of his ball carriers and had to hand off off balance. Uh, now, that changed the situation from second and five uh, to third and five. This is kind of a, a passing situation here. This is not what the Pirates do best. The eye formation this time. Travis Hunter, the long count. Open field is to the right. There's the draw play to Simpson. And he's going to go nowhere. It gets up to about the 31-yard line, but it is still going to leave the Pirates well short of the first down. So what the Miami defense did there, Bob, was what they had to do. They shut East Carolina down immediately after East Carolina ripped off two big plays. They did. It looked like the, the Pirates were going to get out of the hole. They're starting uh, deep in their own territory inside of the 15-yard line and coming out on first down with a 15-yard gain on the ground. But the Hurricane uh, defense may have bent a little bit. Uh, but now the Pirates are forced to punt into the wind, and the Hurricanes should get the ball back in excellent field position. Craig Lacito, the punter. And he gets his kick away. Dale Dawkins receives it at the 25-yard line, wiggles loose, and gets up to about the 28. I'll tell you what, Rich, that was a wonderful punt. The ball was high and deep and spiraling and uh, against the wind. That was probably a 50-yard punt, and uh, the Hurricanes are forced to start from inside their own 30. Miami 7, East Carolina 3, back with more football after this. All right, listen. Miami leads East Carolina 7-3. East Carolina putting up a very spirited fight here at Pickland Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. First and ten for the Hurricanes. Leonard Conley into the lineup, and he gets the call right off the bat. And he's hit at the line of scrimmage for no game. Leonard Conley, very exciting ball player, has nowhere to run this time. 
the, the hole was plugged inside. He tried to shake it outside, and there was nowhere to run. Right now, the momentum is with the Pirates, Rich, and they're giving the Hurricanes all they want and then some. Now we got about a yard. Let's call it second and a long nine. Ball about in the center of the playing field. Walsh taking the handoff, back to pass. And the ball is incomplete, and that is intended for Alfredo Roberts, the tight end. That's going to bring up a third and long nine situation for the Hurricanes. And as we mentioned, East Carolina, we said it at the top of the show, always plays a very tough game against Miami. You can basically throw out what East Carolina does in the rest of the season. They always play this game very well. That's right. They've always played the Hurricanes well, and it's not that they're not a, a, an explosive team. They've got the ability to play with anybody in this country. Third down, nine yards, lone setback. Walsh, ball intended for Michael Irwin, cannot hold it. Michael Irwin cannot hold on to that football at the 41-yard line, so that's going to bring up a fourth and nine situation and a punting situation. And the crowd loves it. The crowd is, back, is a factor in this ball game now. They're, uh, they're anticipating something very exciting going on here. They have a right to. Jeff Beagle's in the punt for the Hurricanes. His first appearance of the afternoon. Standing back at his own 14-yard line. He gets the punt away almost blocked, though. It's a low, short kick. Returning it is Tony Smith. And Smith gets up to about the 40-yard line of East Carolina. So the Pirates will put the ball in play at their own 40-yard line. Nine minutes and 19 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Miami on top, 7-3. to three. Miami scored on its first possession, marching right down the field. Since then, it has been tough. Back to Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. Miami having a hard time of it today here with... East Carolina, and it's Happy Halloween. Here's a shot from a mask through the camera. Oh, yes. First and ten for the Pirates. Travis Hunter, the pitch. And sweeping wide right there. Reggie McKinney. McKinney up to about the 39-yard line. A misdirection play, well executed on the offense, but even uh, better on defense. Uh, number 32, Selwyn Brown, and number 22, Randy Shannon, both stayed at home, forced to play wide and ultimately out of bounds. Uh, a lot of ground being covered by number 32, Selwyn Brown, the senior, who's had an excellent career and playing very well today. Pickup of two, making it second and eight. Oh, there's a mix-up in the backfield. Travis Hunter paid the price on that, too, because he got bowled over by his own fullback, 245-pound Anthony Simpson. Now, Cooch, last week, when East Carolina went out of the run and shoot and went to the I formation, they had a lot of trouble, the players going between the two offenses. They were going from run and shoot to I formation, and apparently they're having trouble getting their routes down because, wow, kaboom. <laughs> Hello. Travis Hunter, 190 pounds, and uh, That's why Anthony he's Simpson, 245 pounds. He lost that one. That's why he doesn't want to be a defensive guy. Okay, that makes it third down. Simpson did get one, though. Make it third and seven. Hunter this time. He's rolling to his right. He's going to keep it. Turn it upfield. 45. Cross midfield. He's got the first down. Down to the 48-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. And he is quick because he just saw that one little opening, Bob, and just turned it upfield and uh, made a nice gain right there. Picked up about 10 yards and got the first down. Tremendous acceleration on Hunter's part here. And this is what drives opposing coaches nuts. Everybody's covered here, but all of a sudden tuck the ball away and, and, and turn it up field and go. And this is what Jimmy Johnson uh, had a tough time sleeping about last night. And Coach Johnson is very uh, concerned right now, raving the, the sideline there. And this, uh, this pirate team has to be reckoned with, Rich. Well, two years ago here at Ficklin Stadium, Miami won 27-15, had a rally in the fourth quarter to do it. Vinny Testaverde that day intercepted six times. Kevin Walker, now a teammate of his with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, intercepted him three times. There is the pitch to Reggie McKinney, and he was whacked hard that time. There's going to be a flag on the play, though. Randy Shannon, excellent tackle. Wrapped him up, put the head in the numbers, wrapped him up, and drove him back. A picture book tackle. But I think we're going to have a clipping call, uh, perhaps on your wide receiver on the Hurricanes here. Yes. 
Oh, I'm sorry, on the uh, on the Pirates. Yeah, Ben Billings, the tight end, I think, came back uh, on a clip. At least that's what it looked like. It didn't look like he uh, clipped Bernard Clark. At least that's right where the flag went. We'll have to wait and see what the indication is. But and That's what it is, and it's an expensive one. Well, holding. That moves it back into Pirate territory, back to their own 42-yard line. 7-3, Miami on top. First and 20 now for the Pirates on that 10-yard penalty. The little flip there to Anthony Simpson. Simpson to the 45, 50 across midfield, and he gets up to the 48-yard line. A very daring play that time by Travis Hunter. A quick screen, and the Hurricanes were, were all over him almost before he had, had time to get this throw off. You can see there uh, two Hurricane defenders just in time to get it off and uh, gets the ball to Anthony Simpson, who uh, goes north and south. It almost looked like it almost looked like it was survival. <laughs> he said, "Guys, I know you're supposed to let him in, but not quite that quickly." Hold that another half second, and uh, you know he's picking himself up off the carpet down there. I formation, second and ten for the Pirates. Hand off to Reggie McKinney to the 45-yard line. Pick up a three yards. Let's get down to Campbell Marshall on the field. Rich, one of the interesting aspects about the Pirate offense is that they do so many different things. They have men in motion, they have Smith direction, that sort of thing. But there could be one big criticism is that they shoot themselves in the foot. They have turnovers, they make mistakes on penalties, such as the one you just saw now. So far early on, though, the Pirates have made things click fairly well, well enough to make this a close ball game. Mark Baker has to be happy. Third and seven for the Pirates. Ball just across the 45-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. I formation now going into the slot formation. Anthony Simpson, the lone setback. Hunter rolling out to the weak side left. And his ball is complete right there. He drilled that pass right there to number eight, Ron Jones. Ron Jones was the quarterback for the East Carolina Pirates the last time they played Miami here at Bickland Stadium. And listen to this crowd come to life. Ron Jones knew exactly where the first down marker was because he caught that ball about a yard beyond it and immediately was hit, but it was too late. A wonderful execution by both Travis Hunter and the receiver, Ron Jones. Another first down for the East Carolina Pirates. Ball at the 36-yard line. I formation. Sidelines are to the left. Open field to the right. Gerard Moody, the flanker, into the slot to the strong side right. The handoff to Anthony Simpson. And he's down to about the 33. Now let's make it the, yeah, just across the 33-yard line. Pickup of about four. Five minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the first half of play from Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. Miami leading the East Carolina Pirates 7-3. East Carolina driving now. I think they'd like to get the lead right here. That would really bring this crowd to up. We got contact. Jumping for Miami was Jimmy Jones again, but there may have been movement by the center. Let's wait and see what the decision is. No, I don't believe so. No, I think Jimmy. Jimmy Jones, I think the quarterback probably pulled him off with his voice inflection. And there's really no excuse for that. I mean, it's not as though uh, the nose guard is, is can't see the ball, right? I That's think, true. I think if they teach you to uh, to watch the ball, and uh, the ball was right under his nose. There's no reason for that. Now instead of second and eight, a passing situation, we have second and three. And uh, that's a wonderful offensive situation. Key errors on the Hurricanes who are twice on defensive situations. Well, that's five yards at a free, no doubt about that. Ball at the 28-yard line. Lone setback is Simpson. Travis Hearn rolling to his right. Little flip back right there to Simpson. Now, did he fumble it or was it incomplete? They're going to roll it incomplete. That play just never had a chance. First of all, the quarterback was scrambling for his life. When he finally did get it away, he threw it to a man that was even in more trouble than he was. the benefit that time that Simpson dropped the ball because if he did, he'd have lost about five yards, making it third and a long two for the Pirates. Ball just past the 28-yard line in the Miami Hurricanes. High formation, slot to the strong side right. Pitch goes to Reggie McKinney, and he is going to go nowhere. In fact, he is going to lose about two yards by Excellent defense that time with the right side of the Hurricane defense. Bill Hawkins, Rod Carter over there playing good, very good defense. Play design to go wide to the left. There you see the pitch. Can see penetration. 
That was Bill Hawkins, uh, I believe, was the one that forced that play uh, to happen to develop on the pirate side of the line. So it's fourth and four, and we are going to see a long field goal here from Chuck Berlick, the attempt. Ball will be marked at the 37-yard line. That's a 47-yard attempt. The list kick is up, and it is no good. It was shot. So the Miami Hurricanes take over. Miami 7, East Carolina 3, back with more football after this. remaining in the first half of play in Miami having a lot of trouble with East Carolina today. Miami 7, East Carolina 3. There you see the Hurricane bench. Uh, not a whole lot of positive emotion happening right now. It's uh, kind of as if they're flat. We saw them uh, going through a very similar situation last week. Uh, there's enough talent on this team to get away with this at certain times, but you really don't build for a championship season, Rich, by having uh, inconsistency. East Carolina coach Art Baker, we just saw him uh, there just a few moments ago. He's done a very fine job preparing his Pirates for this football game. Walsh, the handoff going to Leonard Conley. Oh, oh boy, is he exciting. He's got the first down across the 40-yard line to the 42, maybe the 43. Mr. Excitement, a 170-pound freshman, and when he gets in there, Cooch, exciting things happen. That's for sure. A very exciting ball carrier, but I want to point out the key to that play right there was, was not the ball carrier, but it was a key block by number 43, Cleveland, Cleveland Gary, the fullback, throwing a lead block for his battery mate there. First and ten for the Hurricanes. Erwin flanked out to the strong side left. There's a handoff to Gary. Gary gets across midfield to the 49-yard line of East Carolina. Jimmy Johnson going with a new backfield there. Uh, is, is this by design, or you think he's trying to shake some things up out there? I think it's by design. He had told us uh, yesterday that he's planning to play a lot of players. It's not as though they've, uh, they're comfortable in this game. But again, you're not losing out with a Cleveland Gary and a Leonard Conley. And that's a quite a talented backfield. We'll be playing first string with more teams. There's the handoff. The Conley knifes his way. Boy, he keeps moving, too. You know, he gets to the 46-yard line. Uh, despite the fact he's only 170 pounds, he runs with power. He's unbelievably quick also. It's uh, a lot of speed on, on both these teams, but when you see Leonard Conley, Conley carry the ball, it's as if he's running at a different speed than everybody else. Yeah, he's at, he's at hyperspace. <laughs> hyperspace, huh? So much talent on this Hurricane team. Uh, so much depth at wide receiver, running back, quarterback. Uh, you've got four backs, Warren Williams, Mel Bratton, Leonard Conley, and Cleveland Gary. They can play in any ball club. Another first down for the Hurricanes. So it is first and 10 at the 47-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Hand off to Gary that time, and he was kind of stacked up, met by everybody. Whole horde of purple jerseys around him. Under three minutes to go in the first half, two minutes and 37 seconds. If he got anything, he got about a half yard on that. So we'll call it second and a very long nine. Might be a time for Steve Walsh to put the ball up in the air. He drops back the pass. He's pressured by Vincent Smith, but there's a little dump pass to Cleveland Gary. Gary to the 35, 30, down to the 25-yard line. Once again, Miami using the back out of the backfield and allowing their very aggressive East Carolina rush to come in and take themselves right out of the play. Keep in mind, what's so very difficult to, to try to defense this Hurricane uh, offense is that this is a fullback. You've got a second-team fullback here now catching your ball and turning it into a 25-yard game. Uh, you can't cover everybody. You, you double cover Michael Irvin, perhaps Benny Blades, uh, and maybe even Mel Bratton. But when you get down to your fullback, you figure, well, that's the guy we're going to let go. And sooner than you do that, and, and what happens? 25-yard game. 18-yard pickup. Handoff goes to Conley, and he'll get maybe one to the 24-yard line. Well, the thing, too, with these, uh, with Miami, Cooch, is you look at what they're grinding out offensively, 404 yards a game total offense, 40 points a game, yet the only individual who is ranked in the top 20 individually in the NCAA statistics is Steve Walsh in passing efficiency, and he's 19. 
So you see that they're really spreading it out. They, they come at you from all different directions with all different kinds of people. Second and nine. Walsh back to pass. There he goes for Michael Irvin. Overthrows him at the goal line. Steve Walsh looking a little dejected right now. I can't really say much about that pass. It was uh, about as well thrown as it could be. It was just good coverage. Uh, actually, the uh, cornerback had just about as much chance to catch his ball as a wide receiver. Going to see from the end zone shot. Perhaps Michael Irvin uh, looked over his inside shoulder there and the ball ended up going on his, over his outside shoulder. But uh, 10 for 17 today for Steve Walsh. Not a bad beginning. One TD and one interception. And uh, a big play here. Third and nine. Yes, it is. Walsh apparently barking out an audible, trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage as the crowd gets noisy. Walsh back to pass. Stops. Moves around. Falls in the air. Oh, he's got uh, Brian Blades wide open at the 11. And Blades drilled out of bounds at the 10. And that will be a first down for the Miami Hurricanes. And what's more important, too, Bob, it stops the clock with 59 seconds remaining in the first half. Excellent pattern run here by Brian Blades. We're looking at Steve Walsh. But what makes this play, you're going to see Brian Blades come back for the ball here, making the catch wide open. See, number 21, Junior Robinson, was a good eight or nine yards off Brian Blades, and that was caused by Brian uh, driving him deep and coming back very quickly and good timing uh, from Steve Walsh. Blades out of the lineup, Michael Irvin in, Walsh looking for Irvin wide open. Somebody like Michael Irvin get that wide open. He runs great routes. But I don't think anybody even looked at him. Well, I think if I were covering Michael Irvin along the end zone, I'd head the other way also. This is obviously a, a breakdown in communication. No one covered uh, Michael Irvin here. And Steve Walsh right now has got to be feeling awfully foolish. My goodness, he was <laughs> wide open. You know, you look at the uh, substitutions Jimmy Johnson was making. Brian Blades came out. Michael Irvin went in. No vacation there at all. Okay, here is a second and ten. Walsh back. Walsh going to his tight end, Charles Henry. He's got Henry at the five-yard line. Staying in balance, so that keeps the clock moving. 42 seconds, and now Miami calling a timeout. 43 seconds, 43 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Miami leading East Carolina 7-3. There's so many weapons in this Hurricane arsenal. Uh, their tight end spot is manned very capably by, uh, by both Charles Henry and Alfredo Roberts. And uh, once again, Steve Walsh moves the ball around very nicely. We'll be back with the final 43 seconds of the first half with Miami leading 7-3 right after this. Huddle other Japanese... The scoreboard tells the story. Miami Hurricanes, third rank in the country, having a Dickens of a time here today with the East Carolina Pirates. Driving, though, ball at the five-yard line. Third and goal. There's the pass and a touchdown from Leonard Conley. Miami striking quickly here in the dying moments of the first half of play. Leonard Conley, the touchdown pass from Steve Walsh. And that makes it a 13-7 ball game at this point. 13-3 ball game, we should say, with 39 seconds remaining. Going to see a replay of it here. Uh, what makes this play is you see Michael Irvin in the center of your screen clearing it out there. They, the Hurricanes had Brian Blades and Michael Irvin split to the right, and they crossed over, clearing it, clearing that entire half of the field for Leonard Conley to come wide open, made it look easy, and again, good recognition on Steve Walsh's part to read it. The uncovered man. Greg Cox, perfect with the extra point attempt, makes it 14 to 3. Miami. Greg Cox, 22 for 22 on his extra point attempts this year, and for Leonard Conley, his first career touchdown reception. And I think, looking at him, he's going to have many more. <laughs> I think it's a fairly safe statement. Uh, this is an exciting young man. Uh, obviously, can can carry the ball uh, with a great deal of. Uh, speed and, and acceleration, but uh, just prove there that he can come out of the backfield and, and catch the ball as well. Well, it's it's a point that we don't want to keep being, uh, staying redundant here, but at the same time, it's something you have to talk about. Miami comes at you with everything. They have the backs that can catch, they can run, they have tight ends, they have a couple of good receivers there, they've got the wide receivers with speed, they've got Walsh who can throw the football, and they've got Craig Erickson on the bench who's a 
another good quarterback who we may see as the afternoon wears on, depending upon what happens here. Uh, Jimmy Johnson does have plans today to play a lot of people. Uh, at this point, we don't know. It's 14 to 3 with 39 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Uh, East Carolina has been giving, given giving, we should say, Miami a very hard time. Let's get it out there. Been giving Miami a very, very hard time today. Edgar Bennis kicking off. And he squibs one. Coming down, Reggie McKinney's going to have to field it at about the nine-yard line. I think he wanted that one to go out of bounds. <laughs> he was being a rock in a hard place. He didn't know what to do there, but he made a good decision because if he hadn't picked it up, uh, the Hurricanes would have. Okay, there's the scoring drive for the Miami Hurricanes. 11 plays, 70 yards. Eight up, three minutes and 38 seconds a clock. Culminating with a four-yard touchdown pass from Steve Walsh to Leonard Conley. As we pointed out for Leonard Conley, his first career touchdown reception as a collegian. 36 seconds remaining in the first half of play. 14-3 Miami over East Carolina. Charlie Libretto in at quarterback for the Pirates. He is the passing quarterback. And he just hands it off straight ahead to Tim James. Nowhere to, nowhere to run on that one, Rich. Uh, Hurricane defense stacked it up. You know what's so good about uh, Steve Walsh as a quarterback? He's, he's patient. Uh, there's so many weapons that are at his disposal. Michael Irvin, Brian Blades, and uh, Mel Bratton, Warren Williams, in this case, Leonard Conley. He's very intelligent, makes good reads, and is a very patient man, knowing that sooner or later, somebody's going to come open. East Carolina content to let the clock run out. We may not get another play right here. Libretto, the quarterback, with a long count. And we do not get another play. That is the end of the first half of play from Thickman Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. The score is Miami 14, East Carolina 3. Now, there may be some people watching this football game saying Miami is flat today. Miami's not playing that well. But again, if you look back on the history of this series, even though Miami holds a 5 nothing edge, Every game has been a very tightly contested football game until my, Miami may have broken and open in the fourth quarter and won the game in the fourth quarter, but they've always been very tough ball games for the Hurricanes. East Carolina has always played them very well, as you said, and I'm not sure it's a, just a case of the Hurricanes being flat. I just want to give credit to the Pirates. They're playing good football today. They are playing excellent football, and that's the, really the point we need to make is that Miami is not flat today. They have run into a very inspired group of East Carolina Pirates and this is an important game for East Carolina. We'll be back with our halftime report with Miami leading at halftime, 14 to 3 over East Carolina. North Carolina and it is a 14 to 3 football game Miami having a hard time with East Carolina today and Cooch pointed it out right before we took the break at halftime East Carolina is playing a heck of a football game that's right it would be easy to say that perhaps the Hurricanes are flat and uh, the same thing last week I think it's uh, to be realistic though you can't expect the Hurricanes to come out and and win every half 30 to nothing uh, these these guys are are talented ball players the Pirates and they're playing very good inspired football today and the, the Hurricanes are in a battle, and I think they're doing what they have to do to win, but it just is not an automatic situation. Well, we should point out something, too. Miami's a second-half football team, so East Carolina has at times this year had a lot of trouble in the second half. Miami has been strong in the second half, so conceivably, and I emphasize the word conceivably, we could see a different football game in the second half. Well, on paper, the Hurricanes are a lot bigger, stronger, and deeper than the Pirates, so you would think that in the second half, the Hurricanes will continue to, to wear out the Pirates, but you never know. It's such an explosive ball club. Anything can happen. I think that the Hurricanes are playing pretty good football today, and the Pirates are playing good football. What impressed you the most in the first half of this football game? What was the one thing that you saw out there that, that really stuck out, and you said this, this is a key factor in this football game? Well, on the uh, East Carolina side, I just see a lot of uh, explosive speed out there. They can do so many things well. Uh, he's even thrown a couple of nice passes, which is not their strength. On the Hurricane side, I just see so much 
much depth and diversity. Steve Walsh, not the strongest armed quarterback in the world, but very intelligent, makes good reads, and is very patient, and he knows exactly where to go with the ball. And so many, such a diversity of weapons that the Hurricanes uh, throw at you offensively. Well, you know, you could almost make an argument, too, and, and I think it is a, a point well worth arguing. There are a lot of people that feel right now Miami is the best college football team in America. That is something tough to put on anybody. They're ranked third, or if you go by Sports Illustrated, second, uh, Oklahoma number one across the board. But conceivably, uh, this is an excellent football team and could be the number one football team before it's all over. Oh, there's no question. They're definitely in the hunt. If you uh, go according to some computer polls, they are number one. A lot of talent, a lot of future NFL uh, rosters being shown on this current Hurricane roster. So a lot of talent. They're doing what they have to do to win. They kind of remind me of the old 70 doll 72, 73 Dolphins. We were accused of being unemotional and methodical, but we won. Yes, and uh, you won very big. Uh, we'll be back with our halftime show. The halftime score is Miami 14, East Carolina 3. We'll be back right after this. to three, but it has not been easy. Miami scoring on their first possession and not scoring again until their last possession with just about 43 seconds remaining in the first half. So there is a lot of hard football in between there. East Carolina is showing that uh, they can uh, move the football. They can play good defense, and this game is far from being over. Let's go down now and look at the East Carolina Marching Pirate Band. Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina with a score, Miami 14, East Carolina 3. We'll be back with more of our halftime show after this. Miami always dreamed of being a mother. Well, Greenville, North Carolina. Currently, ECU is the third largest school in the state of North Carolina and offers degrees in more than 200 programs. East Carolina also has an outstanding school of medicine. Athletically, East Carolina has been called a sleeping giant whose football program has grown from small college status just 25 years ago to competing against the fifth toughest schedule in the country among Division I-A schools in 1986. East Carolina University, a valuable resource along the East Coast. And we are here in Greenville, North Carolina on the campus of East Carolina University, where our score at halftime, the Miami Hurricanes having a tough go of it today with the East Carolina Pirates. Miami 14, East Carolina 3. And we still have another good half of football coming your way, but before we do that, let's go down on the field right now to Cambrell Marshall. Cambrell? Well, you guys have been talking about how strong East Carolina is. One interesting note is if, without that last touchdown near the very end of the half, this team, the Miami Hurricanes, would have been held to their lowest point total other than Florida State, which is obviously one of the powerful teams in the country, so that's a, a real indication of just how strong East Carolina is playing this team to stay. Last year at this time, at the Orange Bowl, Michael Irvin had a very good game. He had 194 yards, two touchdowns. He hasn't produced those kind of numbers today, but you never can count him out. The Hurricanes certainly don't. They always love to go to the man. They just love to call the playmaker.
fellas gave me that name when I was like my freshman here when I was battling for a job. Um, Winston Mall started calling me playmaker when I made a couple plays out here in spring drills. So it, it really is. It makes you feel good to know. You know, whenever a big situation come up, uh, like when we were down in the Florida State game, the guys came to me and said, hey, playmaker, we know you're going to make the plays. We're not even worried about things like that. You know, it, it makes you feel proud to know that the guys got that kind of trust in you, that kind of faith in you, and that kind of faith in your game. The playmaker earned his nickname well from the start, catching touchdown passes in 10 of his first 12 games as a Hurricane. The streak continued in his sophomore year, and by the sixth game against West Virginia, he was stepping into the Miami record books as the leader in career touchdown receptions. Against Maryland this season, he took over as the leader in career catches. He knew he could be good, but even the playmaker has been surprised by his progress. Not with all these superstars we have around, because we have some great ball players. You got, you know, we have some super wide receivers. You know, Brett Perriman came in when I came in. Andre Brown came in when I came in. Those were two great ball players. And, and Brian came in the year before I came in. So, you know, I figured, I said, well, I, I got to go and battle. I'm going to be battling for four or five years there, however long I'll be there. So, and, and I came in, I, and I made my mark, and, and things are going real well for me. So I, I, I've been taken a little bit by surprise myself. Opposing teams try not to be taken by surprise and do whatever they can to derail his pass routes, disrupt his thinking, double cover, you name it, to take him out of the flow. For Mike Irvin, it's just another challenge. It tells me, it kind of gives me that extra confidence to say, well, Michael, hey, you're a pretty good ball player. These guys taking up two and three guys just to stop you. You must be a pretty good ball player. So it, it's like an extra boost for me, and it makes me work harder. Irvin had to work hard last week against Cincinnati for only one catch, his lowest output since his first game as a freshman in 1985. I caught one for three yards, but some people said that might as well have been a handoff or something like that. But, you know, we won the game, and, and we wanted to go out, and we, you know, each week we got to work on something, and we wanted to work on our running game, and we worked on it, and it looked well. We got a couple guys over 100 yards. As a matter of fact, we got three guys over 100 yards, so we were happy with the situation. Happy with catching just one pass? Hard to believe, but for the Hurricanes of 87, individual achievement is not a priority. Winning is. That's the way we're taught around here, and that's what they try to install in us is big team and little me. And that's the way attitude we're taking. That's, that's why we win so much. I, I think that's the biggest reason we win a lot around here, because we all, we all do care about our personal performances, but the most important thing is the team performance on the whole. The Canes have had great team performance during the regular season. It's in the hoopla surrounded New Year's Day bowl games where the letdowns have come. The goal this season, you guessed it, that elusive national championship. The last two years they have, you know, have escaped us and stuff, and we worked so hard, and it seemed like we're right there on the brinks of it, and we just couldn't haul it in. So this year we're just going to try to concentrate on, on the minor things and the real small things and, and try to home in on the tiny things that makes the big things click. Michael Irvin, the playmaker on the team that this time hopes to go all the way. comeback because they've got character. They've got something inside of them. They are determined to win. Get it! is that Michael Irvin, although he is a junior in terms of playing time, he is a senior academically. He will graduate this spring in business management. He has dedicated his college athletic career to his father, who passed away a few years ago. He has dedicated his academic career to his mother and the rest of his family. He has 16 kids in the family, so he's got a lot of dedicating to do. Be that as it may, Michael Irvin, an all-star by anybody's standards. That's it for halftime right now. The Hurricanes lead at halftime, 14-3. Back. 
This is Rich Brenner with Bob Kuchenberg and Campbell Marshall bringing you today's East Carolina Miami of Florida football game. Miami leads it 14 to 3. Let's look at the first half scoring and Miami scored on its first possession. Steve Walsh and he'll be going to Brian Blades for Blades his 13th career touchdown reception at Miami and then in the waning moments of the first half on Miami's last possession. Well they capped off a nice 70 yard drive. Walsh going to the freshman Leonard Conley for Conley his first career touchdown reception. So Miami Bob had a lot of trouble in the first half though in between those two touchdowns. They have. East Carolina's played them very well, Rich, and it's not a matter of, of the Hurricanes not playing well. I think they've played pretty pretty well overall. Uh, they haven't made the big plays, but East Carolina is just playing good, competitive, spirited football. Here's East Carolina's score, and they scored on their first possession. Chuck Berleth, a 20-yard field goal. This was really after uh, his first attempt was blocked by Bubba McDowell, and that was because there was an offside on Miami. Miami apparently lined up offside, so they got a second shot at it, and they scored on it. We'll be back with a second-half kickoff right after this. These nothing looks better. We are getting ready right now, just moments away from the start of the second half. Miami leading East Carolina 14-3. Edgar Bennis will be kicking off for the Hurricanes back deep. Will be Reggie McKinney and Junior Robinson, both standing back at the goal line, awaiting the kickoff from Edgar Bennis. Third quarter just about to begin. Dennis approaches the football. There's his kick going deep in the direction of Reggie McKinney, deep into the end zone. He's not even going to try for it. And the Hurricanes will put the ball in play at their own 20-yard line. Here's a look at the first-half statistics. Kind of interesting there, too, Bob. Uh, you know, Miami not getting a lot on the ground, but they are picking up some yardage in the air. 13 for 21 for Steve Walsh, 4 for 5 there for Travis Hunter in uh, East Carolina, not really known as a passing team. No, noticeable absence as the offensive uh, ground game uh, on the Hurricanes' part. Notice so that the time of possession is in favor of Eastern Carolina. It sure is. Here's Travis Hunter. He's going to run the option. He's going to pick him up. There's that loose football we talked about, and it looked like who's got it? The Hurricanes have got the football. What a way to start the second half. And recovering that fumble, number 54, Bill Hawkins. Bill Hawkins getting that loose football of that errant pitch right there. And let's look at it again. Here's a play that East Carolina runs real well, but when you look with a sword, you die with a sword. And this, another, another instance should not have been uh, fumbled here. The ball was pitched very well by Travis Hunter, but uh, just, uh, I guess, he didn't look it in. And uh, when you're putting the ball up in, in close contact that often, you're going to have your share of fumbles. I think Reggie McKinney saw Bill Hawkins closing in on him, too. That might have been one reason he may have taken his eye off the ball. Walsh handing off to Warren Waves across the 20, 15, 10, 5. Is he in there? touchdown and boy Miami strikes very quickly here we are just 12 seconds into the second half of play and Miami has scored and gone on top at this juncture 20 to 3 Warren Williams with the 19 yard touchdown run and that shows you how explosive Bob this Miami and Florida team can be you get the feeling that an avalanche is coming, huh, Rich? <laughs> well, we, we, we talked about it at halftime, but this is a second-half football team, and uh, maybe they were listening in and said, we have to make those guys sound good or something. Live up to our reputation. Greg Cox, extra point attempt. It is up, and it is good. He's 23 for 23 on the season. We have a timeout on the field with a score of Miami 21, East Carolina 3. We'll be back with the Miami kickoff right after this. Well, Bob, there's a little bit of controversy right there, maybe on that last Miami touchdown. There's some people in this building that don't think, uh, th th that feel that uh, Williams did not score. Depending on the angle, you notice the ball's being carried in his left hand here, and it's real close. It looks like his body didn't catch a, the corner, but I would say the football being carried on the inside probably got the flag. It's academic at this point. Yes, it is, and here's Bennis's kickoff, and Junior Robinson will take it two yards deep in the end zone. He's going to bring it out to the 5, to the 10. He's at the 15, and he probably should have stayed there because he only got to the 17-yard line and he got hit hard the boot. So that's where East Carolina will be putting the ball in play from their own 17-yard line. Nice little day for Warren Williams. Seven yards of carry, five carries, 35 yards. Not a bad, uh, I wonder if he's sweating. 
I don't know. Uh, he's impressive there. He's the guy sometimes, too, in the uh, Miami backfield that tends to get overlooked, and he shouldn't be because he's dangerous. You know what's really impressive about these Hurricanes and their offensive backfield? Uh, they've got four ball carriers that can carry the ball, can catch the ball, and most importantly, they block for each other. That play was a touchdown because of Mel Bratton's uh, key block on the linebacker, enabling Warren Williams to score. Well, here's a big stack up in the East Carolina backfield. And again, you know, we talk about the fact that they have trouble with their execution at times and that type of thing. Another case in point right there, Miami just waiting for them. Depending upon where they mark the football, it's either going to be a loss or no gain at this point, looking like a no gain. So let's make it second and 10. 21 to 3, Miami on top of East Carolina. Early stages here of the second half, 14-15, remaining in the third quarter of play. Just underway here in the second half. Travis Hunter, your quarterback, the I formation. Anthony Simpson, the big fullback. Long count. Hand off to Simpson, right up the middle, across the 20, 25, and no, he punishes you when he dips that shoulder, though, and he is up close to a first down. Benny Blades made the tackle that time, number 36, one of the better hitters, uh, maybe the fiercest hitting free safety in the country, but when you're going to tackle a 245-pound fullback, you're going to see on the right-hand side, number 36, lowering his head there and uh, got the tackle, but I'm sure Benny felt that one. I think when Benny wakes up tomorrow morning, he's going to have an instant replay of that tackle right there. He might say, did I really do that? <laughs> <laughs> when he watches the films, he's going to wonder, too. First down for East Carolina on that nice carry by Anthony Simpson, but... They are stacked up in the backfield will be Willie Lewis. And these East Carolina backs, some of them, Bob, are very hard to pick out their jersey number. Now, Lewis has a faded number on his jersey to start off with, and they are tying these jerseys in the back. So the number really is not that distinguishable, especially we're about uh, 10, 12 stories above the playing field right here, too, to make it very difficult to pick up some of these backs when they come in. But we can always pick up Anthony Simpson, though. He's kind of like a little Sherman tank out there, just kind of moving around, running over things. A loss of about four there, making it second and 14. Now here we go to the pitch. This looks like it is to, um, to Gerard Moody coming around. Now that was Willie Lewis again. Uh, again, we're, we're pointing out it's very hard to pick up the numbers of these guys because they're, they're tying their jerseys in the back and uh, Lewis has that faded number. There it is. There's what we're talking about right there. Of course, uh, when you have the camera in there nice and tight, you can see the name Lewis. Now, that was a pickup of about one, making it third down and about 13. Football at the 30-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Travis Hunter, back to pass, short drop, flushed out of the pocket, scrambling. Ball is in the air. It's a free throw. Nice tackle right there. Nice catch and a nice hit. A blister, nice tackle, a uh, nice catch there by Ron Jones. And Benny Blades with just a blistering tackle right there, too. Wow. I can't believe this was a completion. You're going to see number 91, Rod Carter here, pressuring the quarterback in his face, throwing. This is a Hail Mary. Three white jerseys around it. How does a pirate come down with the ball? He not only came down with the ball, did Ron Jones, but he also got the first down ball at the 44-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Open field is to the left. Travis Hunter faking the sprint draw. He's back to pass again. He is throwing deep. And oh, he had Gerard Moody wide open at the 38-yard line of the Hurricanes and just overthrew it. Wide open was Gerard Moody. But it will go as an incompletion. 12 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Miami on top, 21 to 3. Got a late flag near the line of scrimmage, Rich. I don't know what that would be. Perhaps uh, illegal lineman downfield. It was thrown very late. That's what it will. Uh, well, it's declined. It's against East Carolina and declined. Second and ten. Ball at the 44-yard line of the Pirates. The Pirates need to get on the board here, Rich, if they're to make this game competitive because it's about, you get the feeling that the Hurricanes are about to explode. Well, and also East Carolina's got to get back in this game mentally after they literally gave Miami a touchdown right there in the first 12 seconds of the second half. Travis Hunter's pass again, this time for Ron Jones, and Jones holds it in at the 36-yard line. That was a strange ball, Bob, because it was underthrown. It was just hanging out there. It was like up for grabs. 
And uh, Ron Jones came down with it. Yeah, that, there was a lot of air under that ball. It hung up there, it was thrown against the wind, and actually the coverage just wasn't there because the ball was up in the air a long, long time, and uh, you see that he was wide open. I think it was Tolbert Bain eventually got close, but uh, not real good coverage. Well, that's another first down for the Pirates. Ball at the 36-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. I formation. Open field is to the right, and that's where the slot formation is. Gerard Moody, your slot man. Hand off to Anthony Simpson, and he finds some running room up the middle as he crosses the 30-yard line. Depending upon where they mark the football, he may have just got it to the 30. I think he got over it, probably almost six yards in that carry, and he's a very impressive fullback. Five foot ten, 245 pounds, and he is a load. Well, the pros like him, too. The pro scouts, apparently. There's about seven pro scouts here, and before the game, a lot of them were talking, and they like Simpson strictly for the short yardage situation, as we were talking before the game, too. Pro football getting very specialized. There's your short yardage man right there, and he is the lone setback this time as East Carolina goes into that run-and-shoot offense with double wing T. Hand off to Simpson up the middle. I tell you, he just kind of carries people with him. You kind of see a whole pile just kind of moving along, and the uh, locomotive of that freight train is Anthony Simpson. Speaking of short yards, that's exactly what it's going to be. It's going to be third down and about one. And I, how much would you bet that Mr. Simpson will once again get the ball? Let's give it to Anthony right now. We're, we're going to make the call for Anthony in this case. Uh, although at this time, you know, like knowing Art Baker, who, who has wide open at times, he may try to go for some big yards and then maybe come back and forth down from this situation because I don't think he would go for a field goal unless he had long to throw. Oh, there we go to Simpson. Hey, did we call that player or what? He's down to the 21. <laughs> We're so smart, huh? The Pirate offensive line uh, should be pointed out here. They, yeah, uh, they moved some people that time. Nobody does anything uh, carrying the ball. Unless they do their work up front first, and uh, they've been doing pretty well all day long. They had uh, over 100 yards of halftime rushing. Uh, they've just, again, went, you know, shot themselves in the foot here, offensively and defensively with errors. Fourth first down in this drive for East Carolina. Ball at the 21-yard line of the Hurricanes. Travis Hunter, no option to the left. And Wu, did he get smothered under after a gain of one? Just kind of disappeared at the 20. Well, it was kind of as if he was uh, betwixt in between there. He, he should have either pitched it or kept it. He didn't do, he kind of hesitated and didn't do anything. Of course, that's awfully easy for us to sit up here in the shade with a Coca-Cola in our hand and, and kind of tell him what he should have done. Yeah, with Bernard Clark bearing down on you, too. <laughs> Clark played that uh, particular situation very well there, too. Sidelines are to the left, open field to the right. Moody in the slot flanker position. Out to the strong side right. 100 going over the weak side line. Throws a pass right there, and that is to Ron Jones. Jones out of bounds at the 15-yard line. So Jones picking up five yards on that is still going to make it third down and about three. East Carolina will have to get down to the 11-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. Nine minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the third quarter in play. Miami 21, East Carolina 3. Miami came out and scored a touchdown in the first 12 seconds of the second half to kind of break this game open a little bit. Travis Hunter, your quarterback. He's got Tim James now as the fullback. Takes the sprint draw one more time. And those passes intercepted and dropped. Intercepted and dropped by Randy Shannon. And that is almost, again, one of those footballs, Bob, that should not have been thrown. Either that or it slipped. I, I just think he just, just missed through the football. That was just a terrible throw. He tried to give it a soft touch, but he put it right in the hands of Randy Shannon. That was a tough effort for Shannon, but, uh, you know, the old rule, at least it's the quarterback's rule, you get two hands on it, you catch it. <laughs> Who cares if you twist it around like a pretzel? Well, when you're a linebacker, you know, if you hit him in the hands, it's, uh, it's a tough place to catch it, but uh, I'm sure he couldn't believe that the ball was actually being thrown to him. And, uh, so East Carolina faced with a fourth and four situation right here at Cooch, and they call a timeout. We've got a timeout on the field with a score, Miami 21, East Carolina 3. We'll be back right after this. Live from Dinner Key Auditorium, I'm Rick Datsman here at the Automobile Show. Rated R. Starts Friday, November 13th at a theater near you. Halloween, but this is also the Miami mascot down there. <laughs> Celebrating Halloween today at Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. Miami leading the East Carolina Pirates 21-3. 
East Carolina faced with a crucial fourth and four situation here, exactly nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. East Carolina trying to climb back into this football game. Touchdown, and they could possibly do it right here. Here is the pitch. Oh, we're going to go with the double reverse. Ron Jones, the flanker, around. Oh, was Jones just nailed there by Greg Mark. Greg Mark coming out of nowhere. What a stick at the 14-yard line. And if Mark doesn't make that hit right there, Cooch, I think uh, he's definitely got the first down. Maybe not the touchdown, but the first down. A big play by the sophomore, Greg Mark, who's uh, had a fine season. He's a leading sacker on the Hurricanes this year. Uh, I thought it was a good call. I like the call. They don't pass the ball real well, a misdirection play. And like you say, Rich, if he'd gotten by Greg Mark right here, he would have had the first down. Excellent play. Mark not only made the tackle, but avoided a blocker, beat the blocker, and then made the tackle. And textbook form on the tackle, so he hit hard and he wrapped. Okay, Miami taking over, and there's the handoff to Warren Williams, and Williams crosses the 20-yard line up to the 22. It'll be a pickup of about... Well, let's see where we mark it right there. It'll be a pickup of almost eight yards. Let's make it second down and three. We'll give him seven on that. Nine minutes remaining in the third quarter. That was a key defensive play. The, from the Pirates' standpoint, they had to get the first down to get back in the ballgame there, and Greg Mark uh, almost single-handedly stymied that drive. Second down, three. Handoff this time going to Melvin Bratton. He's got the first down, and he gets up to the 30-yard line. Now let's go down to the field to Cambrell Marshall. Rich, one of the timeout, the timeout that uh, East Carolina took obviously helped them set up that play, but it also was a very good timeout for Miami because when they came over to the sideline and talked about possibilities, one of the things first and foremost they said was watch out for that reverse. So the Miami defensive uh, brain trust working quite well on that play. Cambrell, I want to come back to you after this play right here and ask you a question. Is uh, now now first and 10 for the Miami Hurricanes. Ball at the 29-yard line as Walsh goes back to pass, setting up the screen. There's a little dump, and Bratton actually kind of tripped there, and it's an incomplete pass. Cam, in the second half, has Miami come out with any different type of fire or anything like that? I know a lot of people accuse this team of being very businesslike and methodical. Uh, have you noticed a different spark here in the second half? Well, they came out, they were very, very adamant about trying to erase the thought in people's minds. The same thought we had last week at Cincinnati that this is no longer a first-half football team. They went into the locker room upset about their performance in the first half, came out and determined to erase that erratic performance of the first half, and it showed in that first series, as you saw, when they recovered the fumble and went in for the score. So, yes, they are definitely very motivated to go ahead and make people understand and realize that this team is more than just a second-half team. Unfortunately, they waited until the second half to start showing that, however. Well, they're uh, looking pretty good here in the second half, especially defensively on that second-and-ten situation. Uh, Bratton carried across the middle. He picked up about two yards, gets the ball up to about the 31-yard line. Third down and eight for the Miami Hurricanes. Bratton will be your lone setback. Steve Walsh, your quarterback. He's going the route for the hurricane so far. Walsh under pressure. Gets it over to Bratton. No, Bratton across the 40. He's got the first down. Still on his feet. And he's to the 44-yard line. Too many weapons. Down by Ellis Dillahunt. Too many weapons. The Hurricanes just have too much for them. That zone was cleared out because number 47, Michael Irvin, drove the cornerback off deep, uh, leaving the soft underbelly of the Pirate uh, defense exposed. Uh, you got Blades and, and Williams split out to the ref. You got... Uh, Irvin to the right. Uh, you just can't cover everybody. Who do you cover? That's that's the real question with this Miami team. You cover somebody, and there's always somebody good uh, who's definitely going to be open or who's going to work their way open. Walsh back to pass in the first down situation. Brian Blades, 40, 35, 30, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. The Hurricanes' next home game is next Saturday, November 7th. That'll be against the Redskins of Miami University, the school known as the Cradle of Coaches. Tickets are available for Miami and all remaining Hurricane home games at all Bass Outlets or at the Hurricane Ticket Office, or you can call 1-800-GO-CANES. And right now, that's what the Canes are doing. Go Canes. They're down to the 28-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. Looking very impressive here, Cooch, in the second half. I think Cambrell hit it on the head down there. Uh, they're fired up, and uh, I, I think they wanted to erase that first half. Here's our uh, friend Warren Williams. He's across the 20, and he's down to the 18, maybe the 17, and that could be enough for another first down, depending upon where the football is played. He is just shy of the 18-yard line, so it will not be quite enough for a first down. 
shot of Jimmy Jones. Got a nice back on the knee there, Cooch. Yeah. yeah, I would say it's just kind of keep the swelling down. I don't think it's anything serious. Second and one. Walsh rolling to his right. Gets it to Blatt, and the ball is complete, and there's a flag on the play, and I think what they're going to get, they're going to get a late hit. John Williamson made the, uh, the tackle downfield, but they are going to get a late hit there on the part of East Carolina, and it looked like... Uh, Ellis Dillahunt was a little late on that hit there. Of, uh, he was blitzing, and he just nailed Walsh after the ball was thrown. So we'll get a roughing the passer. Let's watch this one, Cooch. Steve Walsh paying the price that quarterbacks do. Looks to me like he could have held up, huh? Yeah, he could have. But, you know, uh, when you're rushing the passer, that, that quarterback is a target, too, especially one like Walsh. He is, uh, he's eluded a lot of tacklers today, and that can be uh, very frustrating to those uh, pursuit men coming in. That's what it will be. It'll be roughing the passer. We'll move the football inside the 10-yard line down to the 9, so it'll be first and goal for the Miami Hurricanes. Six minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Miami leading this football game 21-3 over East Carolina. Steve Walsh bringing his Hurricanes out. He'll have a split backfield. Melvin Bratton, Warren Williams. Blades will be flanked out to the left. Long count. Walsh back to pass, going to the right side. Ball is batted down in a nice defensive play right there. Good defensive play by Junior Robinson. Junior Robinson coming over. Junior Robinson with a very fine defensive play. Steve Walsh has Excellent one-on-one -on -one coverage. You see Walsh making the delivery here. Ball's right on target from this angle. You can just see that Junior Robinson was right with Michael Irvin step for step. And, uh, and that says something right there, just being with Michael Irvin step for step. And that was a very, very nice halftime piece that Cambrell had, by the way, on Michael Irvin. Very interesting individual. A human highlight reel in his own respect. Walsh, touchdown pass. Oh, Brian Blades, touchdown. Career touchdown number 14. Look at that. And did he take a whack in the end zone? I think the pro scouts watching that too, Cooch, are going to see something that this young man not only can catch a football, not only can concentrate, he can take a whack and still hold on to the football. Well, I think when you're raised with uh, Benny Blades as your brother, you probably took a few whacks. And uh, uh, he is a top football prospect. They must have had some great backyard brawls, those two. <laughs> wow. Oh. Boy, that says a lot right there. Big leg. Here we go. Greg Cox in to attempt his fourth extra point of the day. It is up. It is good. And we've got Miami on top of East Carolina right now by a score of 28 to 3. We'll be back with a Miami kickoff right after this brief timeout. We know some guys who get up early in the morning just to rock and roll. Racing fans, this buzz for you. Miami breaking this game open now in the second half with five minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Miami 28, East Carolina 3. Edgar Venice will be doing the kicking off for the Miami Hurricanes. Basketball season tickets are available now. Join us for the best season ever, including home games with national powers Georgetown, DePaul, and Florida. For tickets and information, call. 1-800-GO-CANES. Reggie Branch and Junior Robinson deep for the East Carolina Pirates. Edgar Bennis will be kicking off. And we might add this for, what, the third time here in the second half. There's his kick. It's going over the direction of Junior Robinson. He's going to field it at about the 12-yard line. He's up to the 20, across the 20. And he's only going to get to the 24-yard line. Travel arrangements made through Eastern Airlines. Whether you're traveling to the Northeast for business or pleasure, chances are Eastern's going your way. Eastern, we've got your ticket. Well, we were talking about Craig Erickson a little bit earlier, Coach, and it looks like he's getting ready to go into the football game. Yeah, I know that Coach Johnson wanted to give Craig uh, a lot of playing time this week, if possible. And it looks like he is going to get it. 
First and ten for East Carolina at their own 24-yard line. Travis Hunter fakes it to Simpson, and he goes to his pitch man, Reggie McKinney, and McKinney uh, just has nowhere to go. He's going to lose about four yards on that play. Fine play by Randy Shannon there. Randy's having a, an excellent game as the outside linebacker, with the exception of that ball he's put in his hands a few series ago. But Randy Shannon uh, has done an excellent job in uh, filling the shoes of uh, Winston Moss last year and uh, having a fine year. Miami known as a second half football team and they are going strictly by the book and the scouting report right here in the second half. They've already exploded for two touchdowns and their defense is all over the football. Simpson, the lone setback for the Pirates. Second down, 14. Travis Hunter back to pass. Drilling a pass right there and it's complete for Chuck Burleth. Nice catch by Burleth. That'll be a first down. And he is at the... Uh, to the 41-yard line. Now let's go back down on the field to Cambrell Marshall, who has Nat Moore with him. Nat, uh, a Florida Gator on the sideline for the Miami Hurricanes, uh, just a, a, a result of your commitment to the community, I would guess. Well, yeah, I'm a big Hurricane fan. Uh, you know, there's one game a year where I don't get to root for them, but uh, that's just, you know, draw the luck. And, uh, you know, one thing about the Gators, and I think the Seminoles and the Hurricanes, is that when the other team is playing someone else, we're all for each other, and we feel that uh, the success of college football in the state of Florida is an important thing. You're impressed with what you're seeing out here today. A tough first half for them. Well, I think you, you got to give uh, ECU some credit. They came to play there at home and in front of their fans, and they wanted to try and make a game of it. But as you see, the the type of team that the University of Miami is uh, on their route to a, another national championship bid, they're starting to put the knockout punch in. All right, thanks a lot. Matt Moore, former All-Pro Miami Dolphin, 14 years. Thank you. Cam, uh, it sounds like he's trying to run for office there when he skirted that issue about rooting for Miami and also Florida. He could. He could. He's done a lot of it. He could run for office any day and probably will get a lot of votes. Okay, it's a second and five situation. Travis Hunter puts the ball up. Intended downfield there for Tony Smith. Incomplete. That'll bring up a third and five situation for the Pirates. Football will be at the... 47-yard line of East Carolina, 28-3, Miami on top. Three minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, the site of today's game. Last time they played here two years ago, Miami had a rally and win it, 27-15. Vinny Testaverde intercepted six times in that game. Travis Hunter, back to pass, putting it up over the middle. Gerard Moody, he's got it complete. And he's down to the 45-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes to the 44. And that will be good enough for a first down for the East Carolina Pirates. And the one thing you have to be impressed about, Bob, here about East Carolina, their offense is still out there sticking to their game plan, still trying to execute what they came into this ballgame to do, and they're still doing it with a lot of enthusiasm. They are not hanging their heads. No, they're certainly not hanging their heads, but they're, they're taken out of the game plan. They're forced to throw now, which is not what they'd like to do. Travis under the quarterback, sidelines to the left, open field to the right, Gerard Moody, flanker into the slot. Hand off to, you know, it, it, we must try to try to figure it out that it'll be Reggie McKinney that time. Again, the East Carolina backs having a hard time picking up who is who back there with the way they're wearing their jerseys and tying them and tightening. 28-3, Miami on top. And at this point for East Carolina, they just forget that field goals exist. They have got to get down and they have got to score touchdowns. Ball at the 39-yard line of Miami. Second down, five. Draw play right there to Anthony Simpson, and Simpson does his best just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Rod Carter with the stop there for the Miami Hurricanes. Carter now the leading tackler on the Miami Hurricanes team this season. It's the first time that George Meyer Jr. has not led the team in tackles in the last three years. George Meyer Jr. on the sidelines today with a bruised deltoid muscle. Was scheduled only to play if needed. And at this point, it looks unlikely that he'll be in there. Travis Hunter, little throwback pass to Ryan Jones. Jones has a little bit of running room. Cross the 35, down to the 33, and he has got the first down for the Pirates, so they keep this drive alive. One minute and 56 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Last 
time these two teams played here at Beckland Stadium, Ron Jones was the East Carolina quarterback and had a very bizarre thing happen to him, Bob, on about the second play from scrimmage. He went to throw a pass, was hit, and the ball just kind of squirted up. Somebody from Miami picked it up and just scooted in for the touchdown. <laughs> First down for the Pirates. Ball at the 33. There's the pitch to Reggie McKinney. McKinney across the 30, and he carries some people to about the 26, maybe the 25-yard line. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> Depending upon where he went out of bounds, may even be marked across the 25. Let's see exactly the positioning of the football. It is. It's across the 25, just shy of the 24-yard line. Pick up of eight. Second down and two, 137 remaining in the third quarter. Miami on top of East Carolina, 28 to three. East Carolina trying to do something right here to get back in this football game. They played so well in the first half. Miami just a strong second half football team. And that's when they make a lot of exciting things happen. Hunter, inside handoff. And going down to the 23 yard line, Tim James. It's going to be third and one, as Tim James could only pick up one on that carry. East Carolina has got to put the football in the end zone if they want to get back into this football game. At this point, field goals, Cooch, basically worthless to them. Hunter inside handoff to James, and he has got the first down this time as he's hit and gives a good second effort and gets across the 20. So that'll be a first down for the East Carolina Pirates. And they'll keep this drive going. Ball just across the 20. I'm a little curious, Rich. Uh, Danny, Daniel Stubbs is playing right end. Uh, Bill Hawkins has been taken out. Uh, I know they're trying to play Willie Pagese, but I wasn't aware that Daniel Stubbs would be playing the right defensive end. First and ten for East Carolina. Travis Hunter back and oh, he is in trouble and he is smothered back at the 32-yard line. Loss of 12. Uh, Willis Pegues, the fellow you just talked about there, Cooch, making the initial sack hit right there. I was wondering what you were doing there with a the field glass. You got very quiet there and you were starting to do some analysis on oh, what's going on here. Well, I just... Uh it's understandable, of course, they're going to be playing a lot of their second team in the second half with a with a 25-point lead, but uh, I don't believe I've ever seen Dan Daniel Stubbs playing over on that side. Willie Pegues is an interesting story, by the way. He uh, enrolled at the university in January, graduated from high school in mid, uh, mid-term there and uh, trying to get the jump as a, as a hurricane so he could uh, have spring drills uh, as a freshman. That's the end of the third quarter play here from Thicklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina with a score of Miami 28, East Carolina. We'll be back with the fourth quarter right after this. BMWs have always been engineered to provide a heightened awareness of the road. Now there's one that also provides a heightened awareness of everything above the road. Introducing the BMW 325i Convertible. Contact your South Florida BMW dealers for a thorough test drive. Tammy always dreamed of being a mother. She was happily married, but her dream did not come true. Like 30% of infertile women, she had endometriosis. At Florida Medical Center, Tammy was treated with a safe, simple procedure using laser beam techniques. That same night, she was home. Tammy's infertility puzzle has a perfect solution called Sarah. Florida Medical Center. We really care. The fourth quarter of action here from Thickland Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. Miami on top of East Carolina, 28 to 3. Would you like to have that job there? It's a good seat, I think. Just getting there is a thrill. I don't know about if it were raining or lightning or windy. He's done a nice job getting us some good end zone pictures right there. And he'll be glad to touch the ground, I think, when this game's over. Travis Hunter, second and 22. Rolling out a little flip pass right there. The dump to Tim James. James is only going to pick up two, if that. 
And East Carolina is going to need a lot more yards than that if they're going to really make up for the one play that really killed this drive, and that was Travis Hunter getting sacked uh, for a 12-yard loss. And Willie Pegues, the man making that sack. Richard Carson was a fumble on the opening play of the second half. Uh, they never really have been able to dig themselves out of the hole since that play. Yeah, and uh, Miami showing that they're an opportunistic team and able to take advantage of the situation when it comes along explosive in the second half. Travis Hunter, third and 20. He's back, he's pressured, he's in trouble, and he is smothered and disappearing under Daniel Stubbs. And old Dan coming in from the right, it looks like he's played that position his entire life. Well, that sack was a long time coming. Last season, Daniel Stubbs had 17 sacks to lead the Hurricanes and so far this year he's had only two and a half sacks and I was about to bring up that Mr. Stubbs needs to get back in the, the sack total to get, uh, get serious about this Lombardi award and uh, he's been uh, quiet for all, the last couple of games. Is that for that particular play, I think a Travis Hunter would disagree, but it, but it is true there. And we do have an injury on the field. Well, 52 of the uh, East Carolina Pirates and that is Grant Lowe. Greensboro, North Carolina, down on the field, and it looks like it either, is either a knee or an ankle injury. Art Baker on the sidelines talking things over with Travis Hunter. East Carolina has moved the football quite a bit today, Bob. They just have not been able to, you know, to sustain the drive, and we had talked about it at the top of the show, and we've talked about it at times during this game, and that is they make that one crucial mistake that just takes them right out of the drive. Well, that's been their case all year long, Rich. They've been averaging over eight penalties a game. The opposition, less than five penalties a game. Uh, key turnovers, key penalties. There's uh, no... Uh, Nothing more demoralizing than to have a nice little drive and end up uh, destroying yourself. Or a broken play, too. They've had a couple of broken plays today, lining up wrong, bumping into each other, and, and that hurts. Uh, Craig Lacido in the punt for the Pirates. Yeah, they've had four collisions with the uh, quarterback and the ball carrier today, They're not knowing uh, which direction to go. I almost venture to say that Dawkins is just going to... Uh, fly the flag out there, wave, and uh, let the ball pass over. He's not going to have to, though, because this is a real short kick, and Dawkins wisely moves up. Calls for the fair catch, and then fumbles the football. And has East Carolina recovered? They have indeed recovered the football. East Carolina has recovered the football. Roswell Streeter coming up with the fumble of the Dale Dawkins fumble of the Chuck Lacito punt. The ball is at the 15-yard line, and East Carolina once again in uh, good field position here, but so far in this football game, they have not been able to put it over the goal line. Well, that woke the crowd up, but I think it was a false alarm. Now we're hearing the booze. What, what did, did, they, uh, did they reverse it? Because they initially, uh, Dawkins recovered his own fumble. The referee at first had sig signaled that East Carolina had gotten the football, and apparently there was a, a good squabble for it on the ground. We've got timeout on the field with a score of Miami 28, East Carolina 3. Oldsmobile, official car of the U.S. track and field team, announces the Cutlass Invitational Trials, presenting the strongest Cutlass team that's ever taken the field. Cutlass Supreme Classic, Cutlass Calais, and the stylish Cutlass Sierra Coupe, sticker priced hundreds less than a comparably equipped 87. The new Olds Cutlass is primed and priced to challenge any car in the world. See the exciting new 1988 lineup at your Dade Broward Sunshine Olds dealers. It's easy to put your finger on what's different about this imported beer. It's light, and still light. 95 calories never tasted so imported. The beat goes on. From Colombia, Nicaragua, and Puerto Rico, Hispanics are unveiling their different cultures, and here in South Florida, their impact is stronger than ever. Sunday night at 6.30, meet the Invisible Hispanics, a world of different specials, only on 10. Cambrell Marshall, only on Channel 10 Eyewitness News. Last uh, play, did Dale Dawkins fumble and lose it, or did he fumble and recover it? They ruled that he did recover it now after some controversy. Craig Erickson, the new Hurricane quarterback, ball at the 15-yard line of Miami. Erickson, the handoff to Warren Williams, and Williams having himself a fine game across the 20, up to about the 21-22. And here's a replay of that last play, and this could be one of those. You make the call because the official originally had ruled that it was a fumble and it was lost and recovered by Roswell Streeter. So here it is. Well, Roswell... Uh, 
Good call. Hurricane ball. Roswell should have had it, but didn't. That's right. Roswell should have had it. Craig Erickson this year, 13 for 23, 157 yards, thrown for two touchdowns. One pass picked off. Erickson, throwback pass, and he throws it back over there uh, to Brett Perriman. And Perriman, his second good pickup of the afternoon. Perriman knocked out of bounds. At about the 33-yard line, that'll be good for a first down. 13 minutes, 16 seconds remaining to be played in this football game. Some of the East Carolina fans starting to leave right now. Fine block that time by the right guard, Bruce, number 52. That's a quick screen to the right. And uh, the lineman has to do all he can to just hustle it and get out there as quickly as he can. First and 10 for the Hurricanes and a confidence builder for Craig Erickson completing his first pass coming into the game. Mel Bratton up to the 35. Pick up of about two. Let's give him about three. We'll make it a second down and seven for the Hurricanes. Ball exactly in the center of the playing field at the 35-yard line of the Miami Hurricanes. Greg Erickson, the freshman, in at quarterback. He'll be working with Bratton and Williams. Oh, lose the snap right there. No! What happened on that play there? Everything happened very quickly. Oh, that's the old fake fumble play. The old fake did fumble. You, did you think that was a fumble? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Up to the 45. Okay, there was a... Let's no, watch this. They practice this play all the time. That's right, the old fake fumble play. And Erickson comes up with it very alertly and uh, puts him with his head down and gets the first down. Just like it was on the drawing board, right? First and 10 for the Hurricanes. Ball about the 44. Williams across the 45, and he's up to 48, 49-yard line. Look at Brian Blades on the sideline. I wonder if he got that cooch when he was popped in the end zone right there. I think that's probably the case because, as you know, right after the touchdown there, he had his shoulder pads off quickly. I think that's exactly what happened to him. That was a very legal hit, by the way. Yes, one second within the catch. Oh, yeah. That'll be second down and seven to go for the Hurricanes. Erickson back to pass. Oh, wide open right there. Charles Henry eludes one tackler down across the 25, and Charles Henry with a nifty little move at about the 30-yard line, and he got himself about seven extra yards with that. I'll tell you, these, uh, these big tight ends like to show that they have a couple of swivel hips every now and then, too. Yeah, they like to get the ball every once in a while. I mean, they've got a dirty job. All they got to spend most of the day blocking linebackers and defensive ends, you know. They like a little glory every once in a while, too. A little nifty move there, huh? He yeah. knows what to do with it. Says, hey, give me a chance, baby. I'll do something with it. Nice shot from our friend there in the end zone basket out there. First and 10 for the Hurricanes. Ball at the 23-yard line. Melvin Bratton is across the 20, and he'll be driven out of bounds at about the 18. Give Bratton a pickup of about five, maybe six yards on the carry. Clock uh, stopped, 11.09. And that was five yards all on Mel Bratton, too. He was uh, he out, out positioned the defense. There was really nowhere to run. I don't know how a man that big uh, makes those moves and milks five yards. He kind of runs like a boa constrictor. It's kind of like in every direction at once. I just don't know how to describe it, but he uh, it works. And he hits you hard, too. That he does. Let's make it second and about three to go for the Hurricanes. Hand off there to Williams. Loots one tackle. Cross the 15. And he's out of bounds. And depending upon where he stepped out of bounds, will determine whether the Hurricanes have another first down. Excellent block once again by Mel Bratton. I don't believe I've ever seen a college back that does uh, as fine a blocking for his battery mates as Mel Bratton does. Not only an excellent uh, ball carrier and receiver, but uh, well-rounded. Uh, very unselfish player and uh, puts the helmet and the shoulder pads into the mid-sections of those linebackers uh, very willingly. Well, another first and ten situation for the uh, Miami Hurricanes. Ball at the 13-yard uh, line of East Carolina. Nice drive here, engineered too, by freshman quarterback Craig Erickson. Hand off to Williams and Williams. Good second effort. Good second effort. He crosses the five, and he's down to about the two-yard line. Getting back to Melvin Bratton, you were an all-pro and 
played for many years in the NFL box. I think he's got what it takes to be a very, very good NFL back, not just make it in the league. I think he could be, uh, I don't know, I, I would compare him to a Chuck Foreman. I don't know if that's right or not, but uh, uh, I think he's going to have a, a stellar career in the pros. Well, there's no question he's got the ability, and it's not uh, he's not one-dimensional again. He can uh, run, he can catch the ball, and he can also an excellent blocker. First and goal for the Miami Hurricanes. Greg Erickson, the quarterback, he's back to pass, rolling to his right. He's in some trouble. He gets rid of it. He throws it. It's incomplete. Good heads-up play by the young quarter, by the young freshman. Uh, didn't want to take the sack. Threw the ball into the ground. Knew that it couldn't be intercepted there. Bright, bright future for this young man. Coach Jimmy Johnson and his staff are very excited about his future. He's out of Palm Beach, Florida, one of the highly recruited quarterbacks in the country last year. And it tells you about something about this young man's brain or, or character. When he signed with the University of Miami right at the time when he much heralded Jeff George was announcing he was leaving Purdue and coming to Miami. And in effect, Craig Erickson said, uh, in your face, Jeff George. Uh, let's go. Let's, uh, I'm going to challenge you. And yeah. Jeff George said, I'm going to Champaign or Bannon play for Mike White at uh, Illinois. Here's Mel Bratton trying to dive over. He won't make it. And you know, uh, talking about Erickson again, you know, the poise, the guy he went for was Milton Biggins that time, a tight end who was probably not the primary receiver on that either, showing the fact that he has the poise to scan a field while he's under the tremendous pressure and that type of thing. Remember, he started this drive to uh, back deep in his own territory at the 15-yard line. So uh, uh, he's shown us something right here, and uh, I know he's looked good in uh, the earlier performances he's had an opportunity to play in this year. He also has a very strong right arm. Third down and goal for the Miami Hurricanes. About a yard to go. Lined up tight this time. See who they try to punch it in with. There goes Warren Williams. And oh, he, his knee touched down. His knee touched down back there, too. Even if he'd have gotten across, it probably would not have counted. Unless they didn't catch his knee hitting there. But he tried to make a very sharp cut. He's trying to find where they blocked the football right here. But it's going to be fourth. And uh, I would almost venture to say that uh, Miami goes for it in this situation. Nine <laughs> minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the game. Up by 25 points, 28 to 3. I don't know. They don't want to be accused of running up the score now. What should we do? I'll tell you this. Uh, I would rather have somebody try to punch it over than kick it over in this situation. <laughs> At least you know they earned it that way. Well, it's fourth and goal. The I formation set up this time. Rolling to his right, Erickson. There is a penalty flag down. Here's the pass. It's to Michael Irvin. And the flag's on somebody. And will Michael Irvin have his second touchdown of the day call back? It's his 24th career touchdown reception. I don't know the Hurricanes were set. I don't think they were set for a full second before the snap of the ball. And that's going to be a tough one for Michael Irvin right there to have a second touchdown of the day called back. But apparently that is going to be the case. As the officials were conferring with one of these Carolina captains, Ellis Dillon. A couple of flags down, too. And a legal motion. Eight minutes, 58 seconds remaining in this game. Well, now apparently uh, Erickson's coming off. I think with fourth and six, you might, want, uh, you might want to go for the three here. And that's exactly what they're going to do. But Greg Cox uh, build on his already... Uh, University of Miami scoring record. Yeah, Cox, I'll tell you, is uh, East Carolina calling a timeout here. Uh, Cox is having uh, quite a year, too. He's uh, 10 for 12 in field goals. And uh, he's uh, 24 for 24 in extra points, and he averages 10 points a ball game. Other than that, I, I think he sells popcorn and uh, peanuts at halftime. Anyway, we're going to take a commercial break right here. Miami 28, East Carolina 3. It was a quiet night until the party animal came to town. There's a, there's a party animal. Hey. His name is Bud McKenzie. Bud McKenzie. A red hot man in a cold blood life. Puts him in a party frenzy. Oh. He's Bud McKenzie. Bud likes original party animal. Oh, Bud. Oh, Bud. Oh, yeah. Bud's Bud. Don't be a stranger. <laughs> With Eckert System 2 photo processing, you always get two sets of great-looking prints. Richard, where are those photos? Here, boss. Great photos! One set to give and one to keep. Prints so well processed by Eckert's own lab, they've been awarded the Kodak Color Watch seal. So when you want an extra set of bright, vivid prints... Richard, you finally did something right. For whatever reason. Thanks. Get them with Eckert System 2. Nothing looks better. 
We're back to Ficklin Stadium, Miami on top of East Carolina 28-3 and getting ready to try to add to that. We'll see a field goal attempt of about 23 yards from Greg Cox. His kick is up, his kick is good. And that will make the score now 31-3, Miami on top of the East Carolina Pirates. So, George Cox having himself continuing uh, with a fine season. He's now 11 for 13 in the uh, field goal department on the season. Let's go down now to the field and Cambrell Marshall. Cambrell? Mike Irvin almost always has a smile on his face, but today, obviously, not too much a smile about a couple of touchdowns called back, and uh, he's ready to go ahead and try to get something happening so at least he can have that one touchdown to score. Okay, you're going to win. We talked earlier on the halftime feature. They really want to make sure that they win as a team, but let's face it, they're out here to go ahead and help win, and he feels that uh, not having had a chance to go ahead and call a touchdown his own, he may not be able to do as much as he could. By the way, it's uh, Benny Blades, a defensive uh, uh, guy who was out in Brian blades who had his also had a bruise on his shoulder they knocked his shoulder pad off on that play when he caught the touchdown pass earlier he came and put some ice on his shoulder he went back in and now he's giving his brother benny a hard time because he's out of the game saying you're a defensive guy you guys don't get hurt get out here and play some football <laughs> only he could get away with calling him a wimp right it's in the family a family affair and we stay out of those kinds of things that's right stay out of the backyard because there might be a squabble over the dinner table tonight is Edgar Bennis with a kickoff, a little pop-up chip right here, and it is going to be fielded. Let's see, Junior Robinson follows the football at the 22. Now, wait a minute. Let's see who's got the ball here. Did East Carolina get it back? Now they're going to have another one of these long unpilings right here. I think Junior forgot that he wasn't playing baseball. He was like a shortstop, trying to field it on the first hop there and bounced off his knee. Sun got in my eyes, Coach, but Miami got the football, and they're right back in business, and we're going to see uh, young Craig Eric in one more time. Let's see the replay right here, though. For you youngsters watching, you're going to see a lesson on how not to feel a kickoff. You, you don't let the ball bounce. Every time you can catch a, a football. See, a football is not round. It's oblong. It takes funny bounces. The, the idea is to catch it on the fly, guys. And you wanted to be a coach, really, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. If you listen to the old coach right there, he'll steer you uh, straight. Okay, here we are. First and ten for the Hurricanes. <laughs> At the 22-yard line, and the handoff there going, uh, just entering the game, Cleveland Gary. Gary came in uh, earlier in the first half and uh, had a couple of nice, impressive plays. How about that name there? Highsmith, Alonzo Highsmith, uh, the cousin, uh, signed a very lucrative contract with the Houston Oilers just this week after a birding uh, court case, <laughs> which is where uh, a lot of pro sports seem to head these days. We've got an injury on the field. And it looks like Mike Donahue, number 95, is down for the East Carolina Pirates. And the uh, point that uh, Cambrell was pointing out down there, uh, talking about Michael Irvin, dejected on the uh, sidelines. Uh, and that was that he's had two touchdowns called back. And uh, we'll talk about Michael Irvin, though, when we come back right after this brief timeout with a score Miami 31, East Carolina 3. Live from Dinner Key Auditorium, I'm Rick Datsman at the Automobile Show Indoor Tent Sale. Yes, the 88s are here at Dinner Key Auditorium. You can see them, feel them, buy them, get in them, and take them home today. Hurry on out here. The game is over. You know the U of M has it won. Come on out here. You've got time yet today. We'll be here till 9 o'clock today, till 7 o'clock tomorrow at Dinner Key Auditorium. The 88s with all the incentives. Hurry on out here now. When you host a talk show like I do, the hardest part is to be funny. <laughs> or interesting. The Entertainer of the Year, Miss Reba McIntyre. When you've got a splitting headache. That's why I always have some goodies headache powders nearby. Because goodies works fast when I need it. And believe me, there were times if I hadn't taken some goodies then, I couldn't have done Nashville now. Goodies, when you work for a living. Your what? Okay, we're back, and it is second down and ten. And Craig Erickson under a lot of trouble getting the football away. And, well, they're going to call, uh, there's a flag down there, but I honestly don't know if they could really call that intentional grounding. They are going to call it intentional grounding. But there was actually a receiver right in the area, and it was Brett Perriman. And I think if we watch on the replay here, we'll see that Perriman was in the general vicinity of the football. We're going to see a blitz by number 44. Vincent Smith coming through unmolested, but I, I don't know. Let me see. Where's that receiver in the area? That's grounding. 
Oh, see, there's Perman, though, right there. Coming well, into the picture. Okay. But uh, if that were at the Orange Bowl, maybe. But uh, <laughs> don't forget, we're here in Carolina. Yeah, but it's a, it's the same officiating crew from the Southern, Southern Independent Officials Association. Oh, here he is. He is in trouble. Wait, he just gets it away. Uh, I don't know. He kind of looked over there. But look at now Perman's going to come in. Where is Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. There he is. And good presence of mind by the Preston quarterback, but uh, I think he got caught. All right. We'll, uh, we'll lose the down, too. It'll be third down and 24 to go for the first down. Split backfield. Kindly in the lineup. And, boy, that's who is going deep right here to Brett Perman. Incomplete in the end zone. Incomplete, intended for Brett Perman, who I still say that last pass was intended for, Cooch. <laughs> and that's going to bring up a fourth and 24 situation. Play Miami Hurricanes, ball at the 35-yard line of East Carolina. Good coverage here by Junior Robinson uh, going up. Deflecting the ball at the highest point, uh, Brett Perman made a, a wonderful attempt there, but excellent coverage by Junior Robinson. Now we're going to have a long field goal attempt here for Greg Cox. It's going to be uh, from the 42, it'll be 52 yards overall. Oh, he drills it. Does he have the distance? And it's good. Oh, what about that with Greg Cox? <laughs> and he's hit his point average, by the way, too. He's now 12 for 14 on the season in field goals. He's got 10 points today, four extra points, two for two in field goals. What an afternoon he's having. Miami 34, East Carolina 3, back with a hurricane kickoff right after this. It was so simple. Really, a direct electrical charge here heats up the carbonized filament here, which in turn excites the gases trapped in here. And... It's very nice, Thomas, but I wanted a Bud Light. If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Don't feel bad, Thomas. It's not a complete loss. Bud Light, because everything else is just a light. Miami 34, East Carolina 3. And Cooch, let's take a look at that 52-yard field goal from Greg Cox. Cox gets all this one. It's a, it's a low trajectory. I thought it was going to be blocked initially. You saw, but it was kicked low. And it had to be low, uh, kicked low to get this distance. 52 yards. And if anything, it sells against the wind. He's having quite an afternoon and quite a season. Averaging an even 10 points uh, game right now. He has 60 points in six games. Can we point out that this game is not over? I'll bet you that he averages, he scores more than 10 points today. I'll bet you. All right. Bet your coca call on that deal. Here we are. Returning the kickoff right there is Junior Robinson, who decided he was going to catch that one. And uh, he got, caught a lot of flack, too, as he went upfield <laughs> from some Miami Hurricanes. Got it up to the 25-yard line, though. 8-12 remaining in the game. The third annual basketball tip-off banquet will be held November 4th at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Join coach Bill Foster and staff and the 1987 Hurricane basketball team. Bob Costas, NBC sports commentator, will be the evening's featured speaker. Tickets are $25 per person or $200 a table. For reservations and more information, call the Hurricane Club at 284 6699. East Carolina first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Charlie Libretto in at quarterback at this point. Let's go down now to Cambrell Marshall on the field. Rich, mop up time here for the Hurricanes. You, you hate to call it that, but that's exactly what it is. A chance for the younger guys to get in and get the kind of play that they want to. This time, although fans may be turned off from this, the coaches really look forward to this to see what the younger guys can go and, and look forward to the future. As far as the fans in the stand, well, they block off downtown Greenville tonight for the biggest Halloween party you want to see. So they're starting to filter out now to get into location to go ahead and party, whether they win or lose. Well, we've got another injured um, East Carolina Pirate on the field. This is John O'Driscoll who is uh, hurt down there on the field. And uh, something we were pointing out, talking about Michael Irvin now, if both of his touchdowns had counted today, Cooch, he would be up to 26, which means he would have broken a record that is shared right now by Melvin Bratton and Eddie Dunn. Eddie Dunn's son, of, of course, Gary Dunn, the nose tackler of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Eddie Dunn is also uh, the his, or let's say Gary Dunn's grandfather is Bowman Ash, the first president of the University of Miami. So uh, 
Michael Irvin at this time is in a holding pattern, and as is Melvin Bratton in this game, but it's just a matter of time, Eddie, until that record gets broken. Well, I don't know. Maybe if Michael wants to go to school there next year, he shouldn't shatter the records that uh, some of these founders and uh, you know, aristocracy of the university. Yeah, especially better. the academic types, too. <laughs> We have this uh, delay in the action. Uh, let's take a look at some of the people who have made today's broadcast possible for you. Eight minutes and four seconds remaining in this football game from Greenville, North Carolina. Miami has it safely in hand, 34 to three. East Carolina put on a Good show here in the first half, but in the second half, fumbled the first play from scrimmage. The next play after that, uh, Warren Williams within 19 yards for the touchdown, and within 12 seconds of the third quarter, Miami had turned a 14-3 game into a 21-3 game, and in essence, Coots, it really kind of took East Carolina out, even though they came back and marched downfield, but again, they weren't able uh, to put the ball in the end zone, and it just hurt. And at this point, uh, it, it, it's a runaway now. Well, I think... Uh, for, for North Carolina or East Carolina to win today, they had to play a pretty much error-free ball and play over their head. They didn't do that. They made a couple of key blunders. Well, there was uh, Charlie Labretta there uh, completing that ball to uh, Walter Wilson. Wilson, the completion right there from Charlie Labretta, who is going in at quarterback. And that ball is up now to the uh, 46-yard line. Still in East uh, Carolina territory. East Carolina 46. Clock continuing to move, seven minutes and 40 seconds. So look, you know, the Hurricanes seem to be establishing a pattern. This is the second week that I've covered them, and they don't really come out after you in the opening opening half. At least they haven't the last two weeks. But I think it's to be realistic about it, it's it's almost impossible to come out uh, with fire in your eyes every opening uh, opening half every week. Uh, the Hurricanes had such a difficult schedule the first half of the year at Florida, at Arkansas, at Florida State. They really had a year's worth of difficulty uh, accomplished in the first half of the year. Now they're in a, a period of the softer part of their schedule. What they really need to do in order to achieve their goal, which is a national championship, is just get better every week. Yeah, each week, pick an area of their offense or the defense that they want to improve on, get their timing going, just play well uh, so that when Notre Dame comes down in a month or so, uh, they'll be ready for that. And then, of course, the uh, national championship after that. Okay, we've got Cambrell Marshall down on the sidelines now, and he's got a guest with him. Cambrell? Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the uh, athletic director of the University of Miami, Sam Jankovic. Sam, you've got to be happy with the team's performance today, and a lot of support here. I'd be su I'm surprised that so many would come up to Greenville, North Carolina, of all places. Well, we're very excited about the performance of this football team, and especially the last two weeks. We came back the second half and played much better, and that's a sign of great coaching. And then, on the other hand, it just seems like our crowds keep multiplying on the road. We, start, we bring more people, and I I really think it says an awful lot about the overall growth of our program. You got people coming up so many, I understand you had to get a few more planes to get everybody up. We had to get a few more planes and hopefully it'll continue to grow and we'll have to get more planes. Now if they can just come out to the Orange Bowl, Sam says, it'll be, uh, you'll, you'll be happy. Now we have five games at home and I surely hope that the people will come out and support this team because it deserves the support of the community and what better advertising can our great community have than the Hurricane football team right now. Okay, thank you very much, Sam Plankovich, Athletic Director, University of Miami. Back to you. Thank you, gentlemen. And we see that Ron Jones has been a busy receiver for the East Carolina Pirates. But again, they have not been able to put the ball across the goal line of the Miami Hurricanes. Canes leading this game 34-3. Charlie Libretto in the quarterback for East Carolina. Carrying the football is Denell Harper. And he's driven down hard after a pickup of about three yards. Miami uh, closing out their road schedule right here at Tufu to the remaining five games of this season are at home. Look at that. <laughs> on the sideline. Uh, the headless player. Looks like old, uh, old Benny's uh, taking the rest of the afternoon off right there. A very artistic shot, the headless horseman. I'd say... Uh, you better be probably... careful. He may come looking for us, too. <laughs> Carolina's going to go for it, about fourth and six. Libretto back to pass. Across the middle, it's broken up, and Miami is going to take over on downs. Getting a hand on that ball is Herbert James. Herbert James getting a hand on it, breaking it up. 
Miami takes over on downs, 458 remaining in the game. This closes out Miami's road schedule this year, so it's 19 consecutive regular season road wins now for the Hurricanes. They have five home games to close out the season with in the Orange Bowl. And Cooch, uh, <laughs> without looking too far down the road, uh, the uh, Hurricanes may not play a game this year in any other place after this game except in the Orange Bowl. Think of that one. <laughs> championship if they keep playing the way they are. Craig Erickson, ball complete to Cleveland Gary. Gary catch and run still on his feet across the 35-yard line of the East Carolina Pirates. And boy, there was some good determination there, Cruz, because about the last 11 yards right there, uh, Cleveland Gary uh, just did all by himself. Well, he sure did. Cleveland is six feet, two inches tall, 222 pounds, excellent runner, wonderful blocker. And here he shows you what he can do as a receiver. Uh, it's just another example of the depth and the uh, uh, the diversity of this Hurricane football team. They are so deep in so many positions. Uh, such a tribute to Jim Johnson, Coach Jimmy Johnson, and his entire staff. Erickson has an eye formation in the backfield. It's uh, Cleveland Gary and this guy, Leonard Conley. Look at Conley. Oh, a knifing winner. We're going to have a flag on the play, though. Well away from the ball. Long after uh, Leonard Conley had, had uh, left the area. Let's see what it is. I think they're going to flag uh, Cleveland Gary for trying to uh, be a little bit overzealous in his blocking for Leonard Conley. That was the call. And I think the reason they made this call is because uh, the result of that block was a gain. That play was successful uh, directly as a result of that block. And if there was something illegal going on, then they, they should make that call. That will be 10 yards. And that will be making it uh, first down and 20. For the Miami Hurricanes ball at the 44. Carolina. By that I meant directly re successful. A lot of times uh, you know, hear people say that if they really wanted to, they could call holding in every play somewhere along the line. And that's probably true. But I think what is really important in these games, nice reception of uh, Michael Irvin. Not a bad idea to step out of bounds too when five guys are drawing a bead on you. <laughs> and you have nowhere to go. No, he's an excellent student, business manager. He knows when to step out of bounds. But my point was that uh, I suppose if they really wanted to nitpick, they could find an infraction on almost every play, and of course that would ruin the game. The, the game shouldn't be dominated by the officials. But when a play is, is successful directly as a result of an infraction, then that play has got that penalty's got to be called. Very good analysis right there. But again, you know, we go back to Conley. He's so exciting when he gets the football. He's so quick with his acceleration off of his cuts. He's, he's so good. It's Gary and Conley, your setbacks. Craig Erickson, your quarterback, goes to Conley. There he goes, 20. <laughs> goes down to the 15. <laughs> Kind of like a water bug. I'll tell you, with, with him, you know, you're, you're supposed to be calling the play, and I just kind of caught myself there just kind of watching him right there rather than wanting to say anything. Uh, he's going to be uh, just an exceptional collegiate runner. There, there's no doubt about that. Only a freshman. Uh, trying to believe that he's just 170 pounds, but a very strong kid, though. And he likes to hit people. That is hard to believe. 170 is small. It is. Well, in this day and age. Here's uh, Cleveland Gary, and he kind of gets introduced to the uh, center of the East Carolina defense. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this football game. Miami with a very healthy 34-3 lead. Miami averaging 40 points a game this season, 404 yards total offense. And something we pointed out a little bit earlier was the fact that despite all of those hefty statistics and having one of the most potent offenses in America, the only individual who is there in the individual statistics in the top 20 is Steve Walsh, the quarterback, 19th in passing efficiency. That's how they divvy up the wealth on this team, and that's uh, that's the secret of success. As uh, Michael Irvin put it so well in his piece with Cambrell, uh, Erickson back to pass. Ball is complete there to Brett Perriman. Perriman having a nice afternoon today, and he is down at about the eight-yard line. Now they're going to mark it at the nine, but is going back there. It's big team, little eye. I like that. Big team, little eye. Uh, very, very strong statement there from Michael Irvin. And you know, Rich, you talk about Brett Perriman. This young man made a, a very strategic decision this past week, and that was to come back and play the remainder this year. He had the option to sit out and come back again next year. He's a very talented young man on a very talented young team. And right now, for the remainder of this year, he's going to split that wide receiver spot with Brian Blades. So, in effect, he made the decision 
to play half a season, half the time. So he's going he's to split the final half of the season with Brian Blades and try to make a good enough showing this uh, second half of this season to get drafted by the pros. And he's certainly a talented young man and has a very good chance of going high in the draft. The other option he would have had, of course, would have been to uh, stay on the injured list from the end of this year and come back next year after Brian Blades would have graduated and Brett probably would have had that uh, split end spot wide open to himself uh, next year. But I know it's uh, it's pretty hard when you're that competitive to sit back when you're when you're healthy. Well, here we go with Cleveland Gary. Cleveland Gary, will he get in? He'll get in. Cleveland Gary with a touchdown. And at this point, that makes it 40 to three, Miami. And you know, a lot of people uh, have criticized Jimmy Johnson this year Keith, for running up the score, but. I say at this point, wait a minute. There are second unit ball players out there, and just to have your second string go in there and run dive left, dive right, dive left, dive right, that's wrong. Let's go down to the field of Cambrell Marshall. This is a very interesting game uh, from a lot of respects, and that uh, this is another game where the Hurricanes have scored some 40 points. This is the fourth game out of six that they've gone over at least 40, and one of those games, of course, 50 points as well. So Hurricanes well on track in terms of being able to score. I think they can just keep that up and uh, get ready for Notre Dame. They'll be in good shape. Uh, that's something to look forward to in a school that's very uh, dear to Bob Kuchenberg. We'll talk about that, though, when we come back with a score of 143 to go in the game. Miami 41, East Carolina 3. If you've always felt that driving a car should be more than simply a way of getting from one place to another, we have a suggestion we'd like to run by you. See the new Porsches at your Dave Broward Porsche dealer. Just sign here, man. But this is more than what your sign says. Well, sure, you're using your credit card instead of cash. Excuse me. If your service station charges a higher price for credit cards than cash, take your business elsewhere. Take your business to Gulf, the people who don't charge you more for credit cards. Come again. Gulf, one low price, cash or credit. been brought to you by Budweiser. Beachwood age for that clean, crisp taste. This Bud's for you. One, 143 remains in this football game. Miami, a very comfortable lead. 41-3 over East Carolina. Edgar Bennis, the kickoff, a little chip shot. Last time I went into this area, it resulted in a fumble, but not this time. Tim James comes up with, whoa, he finds a little bit of running room. Comes out of the pack, and he's across midfield. And a good tackle made there by Maurice Crum. Not that James would have gone the distance, but still uh, Maurice Crum's, uh, uh, Crum did save some yardage right there. And let's uh, look at this uh, replay right here. Tim James takes it at about the 20. Just kind of comes out of the pack there, doesn't he, Keith? Yeah, nobody ever, no hurricane ever really touched him. It was kind of like a rugby. He was just following the scrum there. All of a sudden it opened up and uh, bingo. Good night, mate. <laughs> Okay, here we go. New quarterback Brad Walsh in there for East Carolina. And his pitch goes to Todd Abrams. But Maurice Crum broke the scrum. That's Maurice Crum broke the scrum. Oh, man. <laughs> Say that one five times fast. <laughs> anyway, we talked about Cooch's alma mater, which is Notre Dame. And of course, he went from Notre Dame and had that great career with the Miami Dolphins. And that is going to be a football game when Lou Holtz brings his bunch down into the uh, Orange Bowl to play. Uh, Jimmy Johnson and Lou Holtz, two of the finest college coaches in the game today. And uh, that, that game's going to be important, to say the least. Of course, the coaches will tell you every game is. Well, that's true. under a little heat right there and did the best thing getting rid of it. Certainly it'll be a fine game and uh, looking at the hurricane schedule, looking ahead here, unless they just uh, fall down totally, they should go into that game in pretty good shape. Not so the case with the Fighting Irish. Uh, they've got to play Penn State yet and a couple of other tough games. So it's uh, quite an assumption to uh, to assume that the Fighting Irish will be at, will have only one loss when they show up in the Orange Bowl a month from now. Yeah, that's very true. They, they play a tough schedule too and, and the meat of their schedule is coming. 57 seconds left in this game. Abrams back to pass, and Abram 
comes uh, with a lot of pressure right there. Coming in, charging strong, Ernest Parrish making a stop. Junior from Miami. Clark will continue to roll. We are down to 40 seconds. Miami 41, East Carolina 3. At halftime, it was only a 14-3 football game. But Miami, as the Hurricanes have done so many times this season, just came out smoking in the second half. Good closer. I started to say, Rich, in my two weeks of covering the Hurricanes here, it seems to me that they establish a pattern here. You can't be totally sky high every week. They they played real well early in the season against uh, tough teams on the road. They do what they had to do. They're doing what they have to do here. They're not all that impressive. It seems like they're kind of flat, but all of a sudden you look up at the scoreboard and it's 40 to 3. So they're doing what they have to do. I made a note at halftime that it, it's a lot like the uh, 72 and 73 Dolphins. Uh, people accused us of being methodical and unemotional, very businesslike, but all we did was win. Well, that's what we're, <laughs> we're supposed to do is win. And uh, some teams jump around and uh, get real emotional a lot of times, and others don't. But the bottom line is they win. They win, and they're winning big. And, uh, that's a true. Well, Jimmy Johnson and the staff have just done such a wonderful job here at a time when, uh, under very difficult circumstances, the, uh, the administration at the university is really emphasizing academics, and uh, that's great. And I think it needs to be done, but it doesn't make it any easier on your athletic department. And the fact that Jimmy Johnson and Sam Jankovic and his whole uh, athletic department have done as well as they've done on the field in view of what's going on academically is a real tribute to them. This football game is over. The final score of Miami 41, East Carolina 3. A good win for the Miami Hurricanes here today. And uh, you pointed out an interesting thing there, too, Coach, about uh, talking about academics. Jimmy Johnson now is graduating over 80% of his players. Most universities in America don't graduate from their general student body, 80% uh, of their students. So uh, that's a tribute right there. The commitment has been made and it's being executed. The final score here, Miami 41, East Carolina 3. We'll be back after this. I don't think that you and I can just wipe out and eradicate prejudice and hatred, but for sure, you and I can contribute a lot to, 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 to make it disappear.